before Zack Snyder ruined him. Michael King was the best Batman, while Christian Bale was just a dead man. No one remembers the other ones. Princess Leia in bikinis, they transform in Lamborghinis. Please don't let child of the roof ever act again. Please, God, no. Remembering tales from the crypt, back when Michael Bay wrote good scripts. He wrote good All right here is no mystery. It's the history of bad. It's bad. It's the history of bad. So bad. It's the history of bad ideas. It's the history of bad. It's bad. It's the history of bad. It's so bad. It's the history of bad ideas. Oh, yes. This episode of Hobie is sponsored by Hello Jeff. Save 20% off your first meal box with promo code HobiePod. Please note that any comments, jokes, questions, maybe, anything that we say on the History of Bad Ideas is all in good fun. And remember, we insult everybody. Our thoughts, opinions, questions, anything else, actions that we do on the show do not reflect any of our employers, organizations, advertisers, or anyone else that is associated with the History of Bad Ideas. And remember, at the end of the day, it's just a joke. Welcome to the History of Bad Ideas, episode number 475. Wow, 475. Yes. I'm Jason. I'm Jeff. Um, but And I'm Jim. No intern, Lord Chancellor Supreme this week. He's not feeling well. He's got a case of the... The burrito belly. Yes. So, hopefully he will be back next week. Allegedly. Allegedly. It was not from his Hello Jeff box. What it was in the Hello Jeff box this week, Jeff? Uh, the Hello Jeff box this week was uh, a potato, mm-hmm. uh, some f- cooking oil, mm-hmm. and a bun. Huh. What could you do with that? Make French fry sandwiches. <laughs> it's interesting. Do you get a shredder to cut up the potato? Uh, it's called a knife. You should already own one. No. Oh. Well, when I got it, I just put I just boiled the b- potato and then just put it on the b- uh, bread <laughs> between the bread. It did not taste as good as I thought. <laughs> not me. I used the uh... well. One, you boiled it. You didn't deep fry it. <laughs> well, we even you know. sent the oil there to use. Oh, I drank that. <laughs> <laughs> I used a uh, cheese grater and grated my potato. Oh. Oh, so you made a hash brown sandwich? Yeah, so I put a little... I, I did have eggs on the side. I put a little egg meal binder and made a... Make sure it's not eggs from the Je- Hello Jeff box, because those would not be good. Not be good at We've all. have never included eggs. Mm. Uh, onions. Make sure white onions, you don't put those in the box. They, they go bad quick, I heard. Yeah, onions, for some reason, they last months. No. I don't know about that. But if I were to make that, if I were to make that uh, potato cake sandwich, mm-hmm. I would probably have to charge about $18 for it. Okay. Because of the cost of the egg. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> that is true. Cost a dozen eggs cost about, or sorry, twenty four eggs cost about the cost of a, a Starbucks cup of coffee. So you I get to have twenty four eggs in a cup. I of coffee. agree, and that's agree. pretty damn expensive. Yeah, I'm not a big Starbucks yeah. man at all. My right brain bacon in two thousand nineteen was six ninety nine for a pound and a half. Mm-hmm. It is twelve ninety nine now. Yeah, but people complain about the cost of eggs, but they don't. But they'll go to Starbucks every day. And yes. <laughs> yes. Are they the same people complaining? Uh, probably some of them are. Okay. Uh, it, probably because when they go to the Kroger's, they put their names on the side of the egg cart in, waiting for it. Um, do you think that Starbucks is still getting those, like, 18-ingredient orders? Or did they put a stop to that? Um, or did Instagram put a stop to that? It's TikTok. Oh, whatever. God damn it. Well, they started to go to... Uh, Waffle House. Waffle House. And what? The, and the yeah. Waffle House uh, employees had a sign that said, "We will. Uh, your food comes as ordered on the menu. <laughs> no, sw- <laughs> and people, no special order. And people got upset about it. It's like, are you really trying to harass the people at uh, Waffle House? Waffle House even more. Right. At three in the morning. Yeah. Our front line defense against drunk people. Yes. <laughs> that and White Castles. Yeah. Or Crystals. Mm-hmm. Um. First off, were they doing special orders at Waffle House? There's a TikTok craze about making crazy, stupid shit at yeah. Waffle House now, really? and employees are fed up with it. A lot of it. No more menu hacks. A lot of just consisted of doing your uh, hash browns, but getting all the ingredients <clears throat> on the side. 
Oh, I hate so they you. want you to fry up ham, fry up the melt. Why? Chicken. Because people, people are, are assholes. Are assholes. <laughs> make it more difficult. There you go. Yeah. But anyways. Uh, honestly, if you do it that way, you probably can get a little bit of hair and spit in your uh, food. Well, I mean, you get, pro- you that, get that, hair for free already. Yeah, well, you might get some spit <laughs> yeah. in addition to. We call that guacamole. Yeah. <laughs> but but the hair comes from a different part of the body. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> true. I saw your uh, road trip. Um. Wow. Please don't be assholes to restaurant people or uh, to people in general. Anybody in the service industry yeah. in general. Yeah. Or just in general. Yeah. Don't be assholes. Especially in the service industry, we have to deal with general people who in are re- assholes. In retail. Let me tell yeah. you. Or retail. Oh. Or shit. Fuck it. Everything. Uh, let me give you a tip in retail. Don't ask the clerk to go in the back and check, see if they have any more, because they're not going to look. <laughs> Odds are they're not going to find it wait, on wait, wait. purpose. Are, are, yes. Are you speaking from experience? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> hey, you got any more of these treadmills? No. Oh, can you go check? No. Can you go check, please? Fine. Go back. Hey, there they are. No, we don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> it's 9 o'clock at night, and we close in 10 minutes. <laughs> or 8.50 at night, we close in 10 minutes. I'm not lugging this thing. Uh, sir, what what vehicle did you buy? I bought a Yugo. No, that's not going to fit. <laughs> I have my Geo Metro. Can I put this weight in it? You can't put this 45-pound plate in it. <laughs> can't, can't you strap it to the top of my car? I brought rope. <laughs> well, we can, but we're not. <laughs> I can bring it outside and let you do it because I will have no part of that. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, True story. Uh, we uh, <laughs> we worked at a sporting goods store and somebody wanted to put a full size ping pong table in the back of an SUV. We said no, you can't do that. They did it. We didn't, and uh, they went over railroad tracks and blew out every window in the car. <laughs> 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 they called back. Why'd you do that? Well, we didn't. <laughs> We did not do that. We that's, told you not to. That's true. All the other windows are built to shatter except your windshield. Yep. <laughs> and they all shattered. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> so when a clerk says no, there's a reason for it. Mm. So, hey, you got any more of these scooters? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> why are you Why are you worried about a scooter? Anyways, moving on. Uh, let's see here. Uh, September 22nd through the 24th uh, is the Cincinnati Comic Expo. Oh, shit. Um, we're pretty excited about that. Blake is already scheduled to be out of town that week. Um, yep, I'm going to. Hey, you were here this past year. I'm making a note of it now. Yep. Hey, you enjoyed this past year, didn't you? Uh, no comment. Okay. Well, we did. Well, uh, I, I did I did meeting our one friend, fan from Indiana. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. true. Uh, and you got to hobnob with the celebrities. That's true. I got to listen to interesting gun stories from yeah. uh, handlers. People. Yes. <laughs> um, so, if you would like to get tickets, go to CincinnatiComicExpo.com. Rumor has it the VIP tickets are coming out mm. soon. Uh, please, when you go online, treat each other with some civility mm. and get your tickets nicely. Uh, VIP tickets are great for the whole weekend. And uh, coming there, uh, coming to the expo is not only Hobie, but uh, Mark Hamill. Uh, he'll be there. Not, Possibly. Uh, yep. Not, uh, not expected. Hayden Christensen. Possibly. Not expected. Uh, Ross McQuan. Possibly. Uh, let's see. Tom Arnold Possibly. again. Uh, no, he just might show up. Stephen yeah. Izzy. Stephen Izzy from Everything I Learned from Movies. Um, Kevin and Chris from Three Six Five Flicks Podcast. Um, Are, did they ever have their comeback yet? No. Oh. Uh, let's see. Who else? Nickel. Nickel from um, Canadian. Uh, we have Hobie. put an asterisk here because mm-hmm. um, after it's uh, you're allowed to sue movies mm-hmm. for uh, putting. Uh, things in the trailer that aren't in the movie. Correct. We we are now having to put an asterisk here yeah. saying none of this is guaranteed nope. and not yeah. uh, any uh, some or none of these people might not show up. AJ Kappa, mm. well, uh, Zappa, yeah. Home Video Frank Hustle, Zappa. Frank yeah. Zappa, Home Video Hustle, uh, Home Video Hustle might be there. That's right. he, they came one year. Uh, Zappy, the quarterback, is he going to be there? Yes, Zappy, the Bailey New Zappy? England Patriots. Yes, yes. Source um, Point, he's undefeated. Source Point Press, Dev. Uh, creator of Doritos is going to be there, uh, possibly. I don't know. So uh, come get your you tickets. Don't even know who that is? Do nope. You? Uh, yeah, it's uh, you're just d- looking at a bag of Doritos <laughs> on the table. Uh, <laughs> first off, it's Door, and then his last name was Rito. That's how they came up with Dor- Doritos. Rito. Jason, do you really love lamb? I do love lamb. <laughs> I'm just saying it. Uh, yeah, so get your tickets September 22nd through 24th uh, for the Cincinnati Comic Expo. Get your tickets here in the next month or so, but supposedly VIP is coming out soon. 
So that's the rumor. Uh, let's see here. You also can get um, go to Untidy Venus on Etsy and use Hobie Pod and get 20% or 15%, I'm not sure, off your uh, order uh, from Untidy Venus from everything I learned from movies. I thought uh, she was moving off of Etsy. Is she still uh, on Etsy? Or she's also on Untidy Venus on Twitter. You can uh, tweet her directly. Is she on like Redbubble or something like that? What the heck is Redbubble? It's, it's That's like red a, box, it's like, like red. No, oh, it's, it's like a Etsy thingy. Oh, okay. Etsy um, competitor. Yeah, Steve is at Red Box. That's where he's at. Um, Getting the next bad movie to watch. Do they have Red Box still? Yeah. yeah, yeah, they still have them. Wow, good for them. Mm-hmm. Um, Blockbuster is not there though. Um, so, anyways, so, there's a television show of the same name. Thank God. I didn't even watch it because of the trailer. That trailer was bad. Did you watch it? You I said watched it? the first episode. I thought it could get better, but I didn't think it would. Gotcha. Like, it's like, especially with stuff on Netflix, they don't get the feedback until after everything's already done. Mm-hmm. So it's like, okay, this is probably how the whole season will be. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's not going to be like three or four episodes, and then they realize what's not working. So, yeah. I think we've talked about that. It should have taken place during the 90s. Oh, yeah. I think it would have been right for... It could have been like a Clerks, but like a different version. Like a, or or like maybe a, not the 90s, maybe the 2000s, when streaming is starting to take over. And then just saying, no, oh, that's not going to take yeah, off. When, when, when blockbusters left and right are going down, not when... Should we create our own left. show called Family Video? Uh, <laughs> trademark, trademark, trademark. I mean... You know, at Blockbuster, you can grab the movie off the shelf. Who wants to wait for one in the mail? I know. Would a would a video store be able to make it again if you started a new one? I don't know. I don't know how. Well, vintage vinyl stores are making a comeback. That's what I mean. So maybe eventually VHS or VHS <laughs> or <laughs> DVD or or you know yeah DVDs can, CDs may may come back as a collector's yeah, item I, too. I can understand you know people still wanting to physically own because mm-hmm. you can't count on being able to stream things anywhere. Correct. Yes. So physically owning media, I could see the ability to just rent a disc. Probably I not. Don't see that as as something that will make a comeback. Uh, in not, my lifetime, it's not anyway. a feasible business model. Yeah, unless you won the billion dollar lottery and then you just didn't care. I you think you money. could lose a billion dollars in <laughs> and, um, and I did not win the billion dollar lottery yeah. or invest in cryptocurrency. But ooh, we'll get to that. We did win twelve dollars in the billion dollar lottery. Whoa, you are a lottery winner. I am. What are you really? going to spend it on? Uh, we're putting our winnings towards a new dishwasher. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Walk so, quit on us. The, so, so you only need to buy tickets for 50 more drawings? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, the Latino community just turned off. That's a nice joke. Moving show. on. Uh, here we go. Um, from Twitter poll of the week. Uh, <laughs> what Marvel... You what, I thought we got more shit like, to talk about. We do. I'm just tr- trying to <laughs> segue. Uh, what Marvel project are you most looking forward to? <laughs> Uh, Ant Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, uh, Secret Invasion, Guardians of the Galaxy three, and Loki season two. In uh, last place, Loki season two with only nine percent of the vote. How surprised by that? Mm. Secret Invasion at fourteen percent. Mm. I don't think enough people know what it's about. To be honest, it's mm. a secret. Yep. Although that's my pick. Mm. Uh, and winning 45% to 32% Guardians Galaxy 3 over Ant-Man and the Wasp. I took Ant-Man and the Wasp because that comes out next. It does. And after that's over, then I'll... Then you'll start being most forward to something, to the next one in line. Yep. Is Secret Invasion after or before Guardians of the Galaxy? I'm not exactly sure when it's supposed to come out. I don't know if they... They've been pretty secret on that one. <laughs> there it is. Probably later after all this stuff. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see... How these do. Um, mm-hmm. I think Ant Man does well. Oh, Secret Invasion 2000. Oh, wait, we are in 2023. Yeah. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Yeah. Uh, there's only going to be six episodes of Disney Plus. Oh, I'm sorry. Secret standard, Invasion. Standard uh, number for a Disney Plus show. Yeah. It just says it will stream in 2023 early. Early. 2000. So probably March. May. 
Could be April. March. Maybe um, March. Maybe February. Yeah. Who knows? Black Panther, uh, Wakanda Forever? No, no, no. What's the new one? Wakanda Forever. Was it? Okay. Uh, that comes out uh, February 1st on Disney Plus, just to let everybody oh, know. I'm about to say it's already out. It's yeah, been sir. In the- <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> so. mm. uh, Blake, go ahead. What, what did you watch? Well, I was. Um, all at one time, I was watching 1883, 1899, and 1923. So I was really confused in where I've been for the past two weeks. Do you realize 1899 does not connect to the other two? Correct, but it's still fucking my clock up. You know, you should just incorporate it into the Yellowstone myth. <laughs> 1899. I did. <laughs> I did. Didn't it get it's Yellowstone yeah. on the Yellowstone on the Cerebrus. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Wait a minute. How does this work? <laughs> I don't get it. They all dressed similarly. <laughs> Where's the Duddens? I can't figure this out. So well, that was part of the problem. Did you finish 1883? No, I'm still in Texas. <laughs> I told you. You're never going to get out of Texas. No, Elsa just lost her um, her cowboy hand. Oh, spoiler alert, in case you hadn't seen it yet. I think I did see it's, that it, one. Yeah, with the first, uh, the first encounter with the bandits. Yes, yes. Yeah. I did so, see that. You know, foreshadowing. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to... I hope they all die away, by the end. Yeah. Well, the, well, you know, she gets shot with an arrow through the midsection. I don't think she survived. Because that was the prequel in the, in before you started watching yeah. one. So, you know, eventually they come across an attack. Yes. And she gets an arrow through the midsection. I'm guessing she does not survive, right? Well, I think she has to because I think, doesn't she give birth to John Dutton, who is Harrison Ford? Well, her character is narrating 1923. Oh, well, <laughs> spoilers. I didn't but start but, it, but, but, you know, that's not her in 1923. What the so, fuck? I, you know, Helen Mirren is not her. So I don't know where all this stuff's coming from. I think Unless her little brother's her. The, the little dude. I have no clue. Is, is her little brother Harrison Ford? I, I just know that, yeah, he's got a little pyramid, and he's using it to stop time and time travel. So I'm all fucked up. Oh, jeez. Damn yeah. it. Wait a minute. That was 1899, wasn't it? Fuck yeah, that was. God damn it. Would Yellowstone be better if they put time travel in? Well, we are. You've got (laughs) Yellowstone modern age. You're traveling back to 1883. And now you're coming up to 1923. So, yeah, it's time traveling. And then throw in 1899 and you're all fucked up. we got three episodes left of 1883. And like a couple of nights ago, we're like, "Uh, what are we going to watch? Well, let's try. Let's start the White Lotus. We didn't even finish eighteen eighty three. Yeah, I know. Let's yeah. start the White Lotus. Let's start, fuck it. We're just going with that. Yeah, uh, so. let's go. We finished that, and my wife wants to watch Catherine the Great. Okay. So I said, "Oh, that's great." Ah! <laughs> but I said, "Okay, Catherine the Great. You know about Catherine the Great, right?" And she's like, "No, what?" Okay, let's watch the. Uh, <laughs> did you put, <laughs> did you just put a history book in front of her? <laughs> no, what? But I planted the seeds. You may be googling that. <laughs> Soon, I'm like, well, you know about Catherine the Great, right? <laughs> nope. Uh, you know, it may be historical. It may be, you know, uh, you know, some of the stuff that she's done could have been, you know, put there by historians that were anti Catherine the Great or anti Russian czarists or no. But you never know. You know so they have time travel in it. Well, I hope so. Well, uh, we're obviously going back in time to. Uh, Czarist Russia. Yes. And if you're talking about the horse thing, yeah, that's <laughs> completely false and fabricated. <laughs> but it could still be in the show. How about a donkey? <laughs> I saw clerks. Two. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, but uh, all right. So let's talk playoffs. Playoffs. More, yeah. More importantly, let's talk about you know Jaguars Chargers when it's when they're up twenty four nothing. Twenty seven. Yeah. No. We're as at twenty four at yeah. that point. And I turned to the turned to the old lady, and I said, "You know, I've DVR'd Nicholas Cage, an unbearable you know, weight of massive talent. Mm-hmm. Let's this game's over. Let's watch that." So we did, and I liked it. It's funny. It's not a genius thing, but it's mm-hmm. good. And then the movie's over, and we come back into the TV, and the Jaguars are driving to win the game. I'm like, "What the hell just happened?" Yes. Uh, we turned it off when Trevor Lawrence threw his third interception. Yes, so you missed the did. second or the we next came two. Back, we, he only threw one more. He threw four total. He threw five. No, he threw four. He threw four, four and had a fumble. Yeah. Oh, okay. Five yeah. turnovers. It was pretty funny because when it was twenty-four nothing, I had to convince my old lady to watch the unbearable talent, you know, unbearable weight of massive talent because she's like, "Well, what is it? Well, it's Nicholas Cage," and she's like, 
I'm not enthused. <laughs> like, well, let me explain it. It's kind of like a meta thing. He plays himself. <laughs> As a, as a spot. I'm still yeah. not amused. That's right. But actually, it was pretty funny. I, I did enjoy it. If you're, uh, it, what is kind of interesting, I did read some notes on it. Nicolas Cage originally wanted to play Pedro Pascal's part of the fan mm-hmm. of Nicolas Cage. And he wanted somebody else to play him in the movie because he thought it would be ultra, it'd be ultra meta. But no. But when he found out Pedro Pascal signed on, he's like, oh, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll play myself. Um, or a caricature of myself. So, you turned it back. You turned it off. Yeah, and you literally saw the last play. No, we l- literally watched like the last minute and a half Jeez. for Jacksonville to win. I'm, we were like, "What the hell?" Well, that wasn't as bad. Some some fan of the Chargers, when they were up twenty seven nothing, decided to put a one point four million dollar bet on the Chargers to win, <laughs> and they lost. Yeah. Well, the, the worst part was is when it was twenty four nothing. And I'm watching the Chargers celebrate on the sideline. I did think for a minute, I'm like, you guys are celebrating too early. I mean, you're, it's the second quarter still. There's a lot of game to play. Bosa was, was like, throwing a helmet in the in celebration. But I only, yeah, I only saw that. That was in disgust. Oh yeah. my! I only man. saw that in, in the uh, in the summary and afterwards. But you know, you know, Asante Samuel's first interception was illegal contact. I mean. So the re- you know that gives you a clue that the referees sucked that game more or less. I did enjoy the meme yeah. of Trevor Lawrence throwing the ball, and it was like, "Fuck it, Asante Samuel Jr.'s down there somewhere." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was good. Uh, we turned yeah. it on in the thir- like halfway through the third quarter. I was yeah. like, "That's huh, why. You, that's why you back. play the whole game, yep. man. You play the whole game." And I just saw tonight that the Chargers fired their offensive coordinator. Yes, and their that QB was, coach. Yeah, because that was the issue. Yeah, well, yeah, that was the issue. You know, not the defense that gave up 31 straight or 31 points. Yeah, or an offense that put up three in the second half. Or Joey Bosa that couldn't fucking keep his helmet on. Well, Uh, remember, don't make it about you. No, no, he's going to. Don't give give the referees a chance to make it about you. He said something to that ref. I don't know what it was, but it was not good. I'm sure it wasn't nice. Um, Yeah. And then uh, Buffalo barely got through Miami. Yeah. I, uh, and I, I, I expected Buffalo to blow them out because they're like, who's quarterbacking Miami? Oh, they're done. But it's a divisional game. You never trust divisional games. You play games. them twice in a row. You're yeah. right. That's why the Ravens were so close. Ravens was close because it was uh-huh. a AFC North uh, back-to-back weeks. Yeah. So, Jim, you were at that game. How was that? Um, wasn't bad. Um, the Fan, rea- fan interaction was not negative like a lot of the games are. Okay. It was probably the biggest tailgates I have ever seen. Nice. Were there a lot of drunk people thrown out? I didn't really see that. Okay, good. Now, but, i got to ask, biggest tailgates you've ever seen or biggest tailgates at Bengal games you've ever at seen? Bengals, at Bengals games. Okay. Uh, like the regular lot that we tailgate in, it was probably three times as many people in it. And they had all day to drink beer. Well, that lot opened up uh, five hours before the game. <gasps> what? Man. Did you take your shirt off, shirt off and jump up and down when Sam Hubbard, Mr. Cincinnati, was running the ball back on the fumble? I did not. Oh, okay. Did you want to? No, it was really cold. Oh, okay. <laughs> and to do that, I would have had to take off like six layers. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so by the time you did it, he would have been in the end zone already. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I and I might have fallen over the edge of the uh, bow, of of the sta- Good stands trying yeah. to get the shirt. Don't off. do that. Yeah. Don't they do got that. they got great seats right there at the front. Yeah. Of that I, ledge. I was watching it at home, and I was going to jump up and take my shirt off, but. That required jumping. And he realized and that movement. no one no one at his house and with him wanted to see that either. And he was alone. And I was alone. <laughs> and he just finished off all the extra Hello Jeff boxes that were in inventory. <laughs> and he that just had a lot of plates to clean, too, because his yeah. dishwasher died. He didn't uh, die. He left. No, so stop it. Uh... I don't even know, like I don't even know if we were really like cheering because my wife and I were watching mm. it and I think we were just in shock like oh my god oh my god is this happening yeah. and how did that ball fall right into his arms that was really cool it was I mean it was amazing and then we're like oh my gosh like this is happening so you're not getting like the chance of like real replay right away mm-hmm. and what they zoom in on we're just watching it we see the pile like what is going to happen what 
oh my god, they're running the other direction. Yes. <laughs> and you're holding your breath because you don't know if he has going to get called back or. There, uh, it yeah. was looking at thing. We knew it wasn't getting called back. Oh, okay. They were. I, I like the QB for the Ravens, uh, Huntley. 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 Yeah. Saying it was over, it was over. No, no, it wasn't. I mean, I, I appreciate you. Acting. You have to, you have to argue. That. Yes, but it was like no. Yeah. When, when that happened, I was like, "You're supposed to go low and plow in behind your lineman, you dumbass." Well, no, no, just ask Harbaugh because his own coach threw him under the bus because that's classy. Well, again, uh, and what his, and well, as Blake Huntley said, I mean, Harbaugh agreed he was supposed to go low. I agree, uh, but you don't his, throw the guy under the bus at a press conference. And Huntley's yeah. comment was that. The way they bunched up, they stopped the low, so he yep. decided to try and make a play, and it went horribly wrong. It did make him. a play. <laughs> Just the opposite way. Well, you have to be careful reaching out the ball. You're, oh, exactly. you're right. Oh, he, yeah. he decided to make a play, and it was the wrong play. The wrong play. It was the wrong call. And it's all he, instantaneous. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a split. Th- split second decision. I don't know. You could yeah. be J.K. Dobbins and then question the quarterback and the coaching staff. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Um, or you could be the. Go ahead. Sorry. All, all's good in Baltimore right now with that yes, organization. Yes. Awesome. Keep it up, Baltimore. Um, or you could be Dallas's um, uh, kicker and miss four straight extra points what last night. What the hell was that? Okay. So. I didn't the, see any of the game. Team all pro too. Yeah. Read it. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, he's a good kicker. Yeah. Sure. But. And until the betters got to him and. You know, he's trying to shave points. So, I didn't care about either team. <laughs> he didn't do a good job. <laughs> I didn't care about... He was out there tackling, like, C.D. <laughs> Lamb or something. <laughs> I didn't care about the game at all last night between Tampa and Dallas. And I was flipping through, and I, the uh, Peyton and Eli had their, you know, has their show, their commentary on Monday Night Football. Has anybody watched that? I watched some of it during the season. Uh, yeah, during the season, but I didn't... I haven't seen it's it recently. It's enjoyable. They, they are pretty fun. Because to watch. for a game that I had cared nothing about, yeah. it was enjoyable to watch. And Peyton Manning on the third, he's like, "Why what, with third extra point?" He's like, "You're going to go for two right here, right?" And Eli's, "Yeah, I think so." And then he goes to kick it, and he's like, "What are they doing?" And he misses it, and he literally bites his lip and gets up off the chair and just walks away. He's like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> <laughs> and then they did the fourth one. And he's like, "Are you serious?" Yeah. <laughs> like, well, see, that's I like listening to them because they have high football IQ. It you was know, it's, tremendous because at one point yeah. last night, Blake, yeah. same thing. Brady uh, threw the ball. It was a little underneath. Uh. Receiver didn't get it. You see him yelling, and you think he's yelling at the receiver. Yeah. Eli Manning goes, well, you see what he's doing right there. He's yelling at his running back because his running back didn't pick up the block, and that way he couldn't step forward and throw it. That's why it was a short pass. Yeah. And Peyton's like, really? I, 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 you know, that makes sense. Literally the next play, they kick it. Yeah, they punt it because they couldn't get the fourth da- third down right, and they're coming off the field. And there's uh, Brady talking to his running back about the block, and yeah. Man paid to man is like, "You're right, Eli. You're right. Good job." Yeah. So you're right. It is fun to see because you don't expect. You think yeah. as a commoner <laughs> that yep. he's just yelling at the receiver. Yeah. But again, you said they have high football IQ. Correct. So does Tony Romo, but people yeah. find him un- un- insufferable. I like Roma. Well, the, but Roma, the, Roma but, is but right you have ninety percent of the time on on the calls I, he makes. I yeah. like listening to Romo though too. Mm-hmm. I do. Too. I, I, I do. I don't find him insufferable, but you know to say why the the Mannings are much more easier to listen to is because they have that big brother little brother dynamic yep. where they banter back and forth with each other yeah. too. So they have a good rapport, and then you know they they are humorous yeah you know and you get the high football iq rather than you know watching some you know jackass you know call the game or some sideline reporter doesn't know what they're doing because they're just being told to do something in their ear by the producer okay, and a guy like again look at chris yeah. collinsworth has a high football iq yeah but everybody hates him well even though he's won how many emmys, emmys yeah and, i don't know yeah well you gotta have well here's something else they've got charisma you but know they 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 they're both they both have those that goofy smart no, intellectual no, 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 quarterback no, 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 no. you know no, sense no, no, of humor no, 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 as they do no 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 yeah Peyton has charisma yeah Eli well, sits there hold on Eli you, has zero charisma hold on a second Eli can be pretty damn funny <laughs> Eli too. is funny at points have yes. you seen the Eli Manning skit where he dresses up as yeah. Chad Powers yes. and goes to Penn State on Walk On Day. I have not. Oh, <laughs> go watch that. I'll put it on our Facebook page. Yeah. yeah he, he, he dresses up in the fake mustache and everything, and he goes yeah, to try out for... Prosthetics. Prosthetics. goes to try out for uh, their team on 
walk-in. Penn State has a huge thing for walk-on day. And so he goes there, and he's the entire time, again, he's mic'd up, and he's like, oh, run. And they are on the 40 times, like, okay, come on, Chad, run fast, run fast. And he, he's talking to himself, and I think he's talking to everybody else, and then he's – and then, then he starts throwing passes, and everybody just stops. And kind of like <laughs> the best is on the Manning cast, he dresses up as him for Halloween uh-huh. on the Manning cast. Yeah. But it is funny. Because, but the thing is, that you couldn't make the Mannings announcers. I don't want them as announcers. I want them to sit back and no, analyze I, the game while you're watching. I think I think you're right. I, th- I think uh, maybe if Chris Collinsworth, for example, was yep. in more of a relaxed you know, you atmosphere have. other than other than you know being a color commentator. You know, maybe you should just just make your comments and, and have fun and kick kick around. You, you should have the three man booth with two guys doing the announcing, and then the color guys yeah. just add, add flavor. You get the and, easy and, stuff. You yeah, get the easy work because they had Dion Sanders on last night, and he was enjoyable enough. Yeah. Uh, and then they had two. I forget the other two that they had. oh they had Dan Campbell from. Uh, Detroit. Yeah. Uh, he looked like he was still going to kick somebody's ass just sitting there. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. He's oh. got a jaw, don't he? I mean, yeah, he's got he does. That jaw. I like he's him, a boxer jaw. I will say a lot of Collinsworth's Emmys were not for the broadcast. It was for the game. for the NFL. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was, again, but the thing is, he's breaking down and talking about football yeah. the entire show, and he was fantastic at that. Yeah, that, that's yeah. different than scripted. talking about a game that's in front of you. Yeah. So you think he, Collinsworth is better scripted? You know, when he's, you know, as you say, he's breaking down inside the NFL versus ad hoc. Yeah, I won't necessarily say talking discussions. uh, As in, uh, it's like, okay, he knows the plays are coming up and he knows the points he wants to say, but he's not reading a script. Correct. But he is on inside the NFL. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or was. Yeah. No, Um, I'm just saying, he's talking about the plays and whatnot, but. It's scripted, probably yeah. Uh, uh, well, yeah, I mean, scripted show like inside the NFL, you know what's happening. There's a, so, but he's commenting on stuff in real time, or maybe getting fed, you know, through his earpiece. Yeah. Hey, talk about this or or whatever. But, yeah, you know. I, and I think, like I said, with the Mannings, like I said, they made a show, a game that I had no desire to watch. Yeah. Enjoyable. I watched that for a good quarter and a half. Yeah, just because they were fun to watch. It was one of the only times I was actually rooting for the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> And I just want another storyline other than Tom Brady. I mean, he is the goat. arguably the greatest quarterback to play the game. And I respect that, but I'm just tired of the storyline. Did you see the headline today? Is he coming back for an eighth title? <laughs> I don't yeah. know. Nobody knows. Well, he came back this year for an eighth title and didn't get it. Yeah. Isn't he a free agent now? Yeah. The Raiders. Yeah, that's what yeah, I keep s- hearing. Somebody's going to pay him. To come come play again, and and well, he doesn't have Giselle anymore to hold him. Yeah, back. I mean, I, I think this whole him back. I think this whole season was you lose a hundred two things of dollars, and your wife leaves you. And yeah, in the middle of the season, <laughs> you know, at the beginning of the season. Well, yeah, I mean, well, think about it. He, he obviously distracted, not the the entire you know Tom Brady one hundred percent Mister Football. So he probably had two reasons I would give to his bad season this year, right? Forty five less than Tom season. Huh. You know, divorce is gonna your family life's gonna yeah. have an effect on you no matter what. And two, you know, he is again, old man age is old man time is undefeated, kicking in a little yep. bit more. And he lost a hundred million dollars. And he lost a hundred million dollars. Yeah, exactly. Uh, also to let you guys know, less than Tom is also a new sit- workplace sitcom coming to NBC this year. <laughs> so uh this fall. So be ready for it. Less than Tom. Don't Trademark. be less than Tom. <laughs> Have we gotten Tom Brady to sign on with that yet? Uh, yes, he is. Okay. He is. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. That was Tom Arnold. <laughs> no. Big difference. Wait and a minute. Tom Brady's coming to the Comic Expo? It, Wait a minute. It's Tom Tom Arnold playing Tom, Tom Brady. Brady. <laughs> uh, Bill <Sold>. Belichick. <laughs> Bill Belichick's played by Tom Berenger. That's an interesting move. Yeah. Like, are they are you just picking Tom's? out Tom? Yes. Yeah. It's less than Tom. <laughs> It's not only Tom. Yeah. That's also that's on yeah. CBS. Yeah. Catch that this year. <laughs> only Tom sounds like a terrible uh, porn site. Tom Bergeron <laughs> is on that one. Yeah. <laughs> only Tom. <laughs> I don't know any other Toms. Damn it. Tommy Two Tone. I was he? just about to say that. Wow. Tommy Two Tone will be on L- Other Tom. <laughs> CBS this fall. <laughs> 830. The, the Tom That's we funny. went to is Tommy Two Tone. That, that, that was the one I was just about to spit out. Give me said. another Tommy, somebody. Give me a Tom. Well, we got, well they did Tom have, Hanks, Tom Cruise. 
They, eh, too big. You know, Tommy Gunn. They did hire Tommy Gunn. Tommy Gunn. That's right. They did hire Tony Danza to play Tom, and it didn't work. No. <laughs> uh, Fox cool. has this year less than Tony. Uh, come check it out. <laughs> So what was it? What was it Uncle Rico? Uh, yeah. <laughs> the guy from uh, yeah. uh, Napoleon, Napoleon Dynamite. Napoleon Dynamite. Uncle Rico signing for Denver Broncos. <laughs> uh, man, that's some good shows coming to Fox, ABS, CBS, yeah. and NBC. Okay. So what did we all think of our Reese or our uh, oh, sure. Kiss sugar cookie? Candies? That's that's good. I haven't tried it yet. I like it. it it's a white chocolate. Did not taste like yeah. a sugar cookie to me. No, it, but it, it was smells good. like one. It, it does have the aroma of one, but it still tasted yeah. like white chocolate with yeah. mm-hmm. crunchy something in it. Crunchy sugar cookie bits colored red and green. I mean, they are holiday Hershey Kisses, which were a little behind the schedule, but that's okay. We, well, we had a lot of stuff to We've eat. We've got a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we still have stuff to it eat. It does taste somewhat like a cookie. Well, there's cookie bits yeah. in it. Yeah. Bits but in I mean, it. like yeah. the flavoring in that? It's a lot of white chocolate, though. <laughs> um, it's not bad. Yeah, I like the other one. I think we had last week, isn't it? What do we have last week? That was uh, the Hershey. Oh, uh, was that the uh, fondue kisses or something? Uh, lava, lava cake. cake. Lava, lava cake, cake was lava probably cake. the best. Yeah. We do have hot cocoa left too. We'll oh, try that for geez. Brian next week. We'll do that for Brian next week. That's good. Yeah, the weather would be colder, so hot cocoa would be better. Yeah, I mean, it's like mid fifties today. Come on, Oreo. We're switching over to Hershey kisses now because we haven't seen a new Oreo in a while. Oh. Um, uh, before we get to listener feedback, yeah. I did want to say, did anybody watch Last of Us on HBO Max? I, I want to. I did not. Jim, did you? Yes. Did you like it? It was okay. I was just one episode. Yeah. It was an hour and 20 minutes. Yeah. I, I kind of feel the same way as you. It was like, it was good, but I, it wasn't anything. I heard it was pretty close to the beginning of the video game. Okay. I like um, uh, Pascal. Pedro Pascal. Yeah. I, I think yeah. he did a really good job. I like his character, or I like his acting, so I'm okay with it. I like him better when he has a helmet on. <laughs> Good call. <laughs> you you like him in that uh, protective father role. <laughs> I saw a meme talking about, hey, Pedro Pascal in the uh, protective Protect- father role. I, I did like. I like him better in the Nicolas adult. Cage. <laughs> Nick, <laughs> yeah, it was good. Actually, he was good in that movie, too, by the way. I like him better as the Viper. Uh, and we won't do spoilers, just premiere. But it was kind of. Like, I was watching, and they're like, you see the prologue, like the beginning, and then it was like 20 years yeah. later, and I'm like, what? What, <laughs> what? what? what happened? Um, I they like that because... They jumped ahead 20 years. What's that? They jumped ahead 20 years. Yes. Yeah. Well, you yeah, asked so, what wow. happened. Sorry. Explain it. Thank they you. They jumped Thank ahead you. 20 years. I really enjoyed the uh, scientific uh, explanation at the very beginning. I thought that was cool. Yeah. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, don't um, don't blow it for me, because I, I, I like that beginning stuff. Yeah, that's uh, all I was going to say. Because like, that's what... It starts with, like, a... Yeah. A news show from like the uh, that, that's why I like The Walking Dead in the beginning because you know this I you don't like, know it just he just wakes up from a coma and you're like fuck the time yeah, jump like twenty eight days later did years yeah earlier yeah mm-hmm. so, okay. time jump I, I like the time jump because it got through a lot of the Walking Dead crap that you didn't need mm. um because you're already an established civilization then twenty years in the future yeah um I like that part uh, Anna Torva I think from Fringe uh, was in it mm. uh, which I really enjoy. Yeah, uh, because she's running uh, in the apartment building. I'm like, who is that? <gasps> Fringe! Hey, that's where she's at. Um, I've never seen an episode of Fringe. It's a great show. It's you on know, HBO think, Max. I think she would love it if you saw her and yelled, hey, Fringe! <laughs> <laughs> at the Comic Expo, September 22nd to 24th. I already talked to Wal- uh, Walter. There you go. So, uh, but yeah, it, I would. I think it has potential to be good. Um but we'll see what happens with yeah, it. Yeah, set up. So. Yeah. Uh, I, I think the cast helps. Like, I, I like the cast. Having a cast does help. Uh, speaking of that, having a cast coming to CBS this fall, <laughs> 10 p.m., uh, what happens when a screenwriter who loses his job makes his own channel? <laughs> Hi, Jakes and Sue. Starring Catherine Hegel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're desperate. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Anyways, we've, we've gone. <laughs> what you know over on HBO Max, I watched Velma. Oh, how was that? The first two episodes. And it got a lot of, of hate, hate mm-hmm. uh, by critics and, uh, and... Well, actually, more by fans. Critics weren't as... You know, critics didn't rate it that high, but the fans gave it shitty reviews. Social media. 
Social media. Social media gave it bad. Rotten Tomatoes and IMDb. I think it's all on expectations going into it. They thought it to be one thing, and it was not that. Yeah. How many episodes? Is, uh, did they only release two episodes? Only two have been released so far. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And I, I enjoyed it. I mean, it was it was amusing. I wouldn't say it's, it's great, but, I mean, I expected... Mindy Kaling humor? Hot garbage. But... <laughs> I mean, not hot garbage Mindy Kaling humor, but... <laughs> no. But Mindy Kaling humor, like office humor, you know? Or just Or humor like different. Um, Mindy show. The sex lives of college girls. Do you like mm-hmm. that? Yeah, I did too. That's did you another, finish second season? Yep, that's another Mindy Kaling. Yeah, mm-hmm. we just finished second season. Really enjoyable. Um, so this is about the sex lives of Velma, then? Yeah, I, yeah, kind of it is. Okay. Oh, she's a lesbian in it. Is that okay? Well, she she's uh, kind she's of been a lesbian. Yes. <laughs> she, she, yeah, she's just kind of uh, exploring her uh, sexuality or what she wants. Oh, okay. Okay. Tell me what you want. What you really, really want. Yeah. I'll tell you what, Sex Lives of College Girls got renewed for a season three. There was some uh, speculation it wasn't because it's an HBO Max create, uh, series mm-hmm. created just for the streaming network, and they pretty much cut all of those, but they kept that one. I'll keep some again. Yeah. They're, they're moving some stuff to a different streaming site. Yeah. Well, the guy <laughs> running HBO is like, we need to actually see return on investment on streaming, and there isn't a valid uh, Peacock says yet. otherwise. Peacock as, says otherwise. As to where, you know, your revenue, your your good revenue is actually coming from. Because I guess when you throw so much money at creating shows and you're not necessarily getting new subscribers, you, you pretty much will cap out pretty quickly on mm. your subscriptions. And that's the money that you have to, you know, program your your. Service it's like a pyramid with. scam, in all honesty. There's only a certain amount of people that you're going to be able to get, right? Yes. I mean, after a while, you're going to run out of people. It didn't stop Netflix from throwing money at everybody a few years ago. Well, they were only $6 billion in debt. Uh, not as much as uh, Lerner for the Las Vegas... Uh, <laughs> Robin Lehner. Yeah, Lehner. Sorry, that's right. I was trying to get... Uh, for the Las Vegas Knights, Golden Knights. $50 million in uh, yeah, let me bankruptcy. Get, bankruptcy. Uh-huh. Let me get this for you here. $1.2 million in exotic snakes. Okay, so... Jesus. Uh, Vegas Golden Knights goaltender Robert Lehner. Lehner. Robin. Robin. And his wife filed bankruptcy in Nevada, signed up to $50 million in debt uh, for dozens of creditors. Uh, let's see here. Him and his father owned a company that was doing business in Arizona and Nevada. Uh, they took a loan out and never even made one payment. Kind of bad, bad move. So they got sued, and then this kind of all started falling apart. Uh, like you said, Jim, he um, paid $1.2 million in 2017 for exotic snakes. Uh, he put them on his snake farm, rare snake farm in Missouri, uh, the goalie did, and uh, unfortunately, they began to breed uh, uncontrollably, which boggles my mind. And because of that, it reduced the value of the snakes <laughs> because they're not rare anymore. They just keep making them. He also has anacondas at the, at the uh, farm. So he was breeding anacondas and ball pythons. Mm. So, uh, yeah, so he filed for bankruptcy. He well, signed apparently, up. he was really good at it. Yeah. <laughs> he filed a five-year... $25 million uh, contract in 2020. We should get him involved in trying to save some species that are uh, going, going extinct. I don't think he's the one that was impregnating the snakes. But but he set it up for them. To- oh, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. We need to, yeah. like, give him some pandas <laughs> and then yeah. maybe whatever, use his a- magic. African elephants. Uh- uh, hi, sir. Uh, what's your deal? What's your ideal to get out of that's debt? It. Uh, I'm going to have a panda farm in Missouri. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I need to raise weasels <laughs> to combat the snakes. <laughs> or mongoose. What do you want or to do? Or mongoose. I'm sorry. Mongoose, yeah. But do the mongoose kill the snake or the snake kill the mongoose? Uh, well, Both. see. Yeah. Okay. Depending on how good the mongoose is. Speaking of that, uh, ABC this Friday, TGIF, Panda Farm is coming. Take a look, 8 p.m. Uh, Patrick Duffy stars as a out-of-work goalie who has to open a pan- panda farm to stop his bankruptcy. Panda Farm, 8 p.m. on TGIF. You know, that guy's also a hockey goalie. I mean, how many millions of dollars in, in uh, dental wear is he wasted? <laughs> well, he, well, he does wear a full mask. Oh, okay. He's a goalie. 
Well, well, still, how many teeth has he lost? He's got to be. He's a hockey seven. player. It says he's seven. a hockey player. He's got to have missing teeth. I don't think you got to. I mean, goalies really No, I think you have to. I, I don't, don't think it's a requirement these days. Oh, man, that's why goalies don't get the respect that they do anymore. He's not a They Vetchkin. still keep all their teeth. <laughs> he's not a what? Ovechkin? Oh. oh. Yeah. <laughs> Who has one? He might have four teeth <laughs> now, and not his front ones. And he doesn't. And he, like, why don't you get him fixed? He goes, why would I? <laughs> when, when, when I'm still playing. Yeah. He's like, I'll wait until my career's over. Then we'll get it done. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, he signed a five-year, $25 million contract in 2020. Uh, he's now 31, so he has three years left. He's been injured all year, uh, has not played, and is not expected to come back until next year. Mm. Boy, yeah. Good return on investment there. Great job by Vegas in yep. letting uh, Mark Andre Fleury go and keep definitely Laner. Definitely called uh, Mark Andre Fleury d- uh, has exotic elephants though, so it's different. No, no, he has uh, whatever the Canadian uh, wild animal. moose. He's got polar bears and moose. I don't think there's polar bears in Canada. Is there? Yes. yes. <laughs> no. That's pretty much the Where place they polar live. bears are. <laughs> Is it? I thought it was like South Pole. No. You sure? Yep. Uh. Polar yeah. bears are from the north. Penguins are from the south. They do not interact. <laughs> yeah, I've seen a lot of kids' cartoons that they do. Yeah. Are you telling me they're lying? Yes. Okay. Just kids' checking. cartoons lie all the what? time. Yeah, I don't believe that. The one had Santa Claus in it. You saying he's not real? The one had Easter no. Bunny. Yes. Well, you, know, you got to get to go view the polar bears because they're all dying from diabetes type 2. From all the Coca-Cola commercials they've been in. <laughs> from drinking all the Coke yeah. and eating all the penguins. <laughs> and koalas are dying yeah. from chlamydia. <laughs> so it's a bad system all around. Maybe you just shouldn't be a bear. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't have anything. Uh, play, <laughs> Blake, let's do some listener feedback. All right. That sounds for the bomb listener feedback brought to you by... Shitty uh, metal artist sculptures that get paid ten million dollars. All right, so we start off with uh, first guy that we always start off with. A pans number one fan seven. Can't give yourself a nickname. Formerly known as Big D. Co Canadian of the year. Dad. He yeah, always Co Canadian. Yeah. He always delivers. Yes. Thrice. The man. Yeah. Uh, Doug. Yes. What is famed director Edgar Wright doing directing a McDonald's commercial? I know Making he, money. I know what he's not doing. What? Showing food. <laughs> he did not show food in the commercial. They did not have the bump, 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 bump. No, just raise I, your eyebrows. I have no idea. I don't yeah. know this commercial or You're gonna Edgar Wright. It, it pretty it, much but, starts with people in an office, like a big, the open floor, con, floor plan concept where people are sitting at their, their, their tables and the one woman gets her uh, post-it note and just draws like the M and puts on her other uh, her other person's computer and they and, and she just like raises her eyebrows and she's like oh and she raises her eyebrows and they go grab their stuff and walk out and they see a guy there and they raise their eyebrows and he grabs the stuff and the whole office walks out and that's pretty much the commercial. So when they raise their eyebrows, they look like gold marches. Yep. Ah. You know why I know what he's not doing either? Mm. Directing Ant Man. No, he was not directing Ant Man. Yeah. So um, in this commercial, there was no uh, pubs or zombies. Nope. There was no uh, police. Nope. No, no Simon Pegg. There were no aliens and blue people. No nope. Nick Frost. No. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. There's no Last Night in Soho reference. Nope. Nope. <laughs> so. Do I want to watch this commercial? No. Well, Jim explained it to you. Does that, that sound intriguing? That's pretty much all he, it is. He explained it to me, but what's what's the allure? Why did he do it? Because he got paid a lot of money? Oh, yeah, because they paid him. They paid him money. Well, I don't understand the, <laughs> the, the question there. He was getting paid money to direct, so I've, he directed. There you go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Moving on. There you go. There's no... Oh, was there a, a Mick Cornetto in it? <laughs> a what? <coughs> a Cornetto. That's the name of the oh, trilogy, trilogy yeah. movie. Yeah, Mick Cornetto. It's a deep. It's a deep dive dive joke, okay. Jason. Sorry, it's all right. No. Okay. <laughs> thank you, <laughs> Jim. You had really good eyebrows on that one. So you don't need one, to see this uh, commercial to understand what's going on in all of his other movies. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> From the pop culture cafe. 
What film would any of you find, gentlemen? You know, that's a loosely <laughs> de- descriptive term. Stop caring about a reboot. I mean, that you have the original that you love, and that one will always be your favorite. So you just don't care if they screw up the new one because you love the first one so much. That's a good question. Anybody? Mm. Well, I'm going to come out and say Clue. Mm. I mean, oh yeah. I, I wouldn't mind if they made a new one, but it isn't going to change the fact that I love the original movie so much. Ryan Reynolds is working on it now. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it could be good. It could yeah. be bad. Either way, it's not going to... Stars the whole Wrexham soccer team, too. Ooh, that'd be kind interesting. interesting. <laughs> I, I would say uh, House Party, but I didn't care about the first one, and I don't care about the second one, either. <laughs> Third one? How about House Party 3? Did or you like or the one that just produced the, the reboot they're coming out now? I don't care. Yeah, it did not do well. The one that I... The movie I'm thinking is uh, The Shining. Oh. I, didn't, I didn't give a shit about the reboot. The one with Steven Weber? I don't know. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. The, the guy from Wings. Yeah. The original one was, was fantastic. So. Okay. Unless I've, Stephen uh, King. Yeah. I've, I've learned not well, to. That guy, he just not done anything good. <laughs> <laughs> What's he done in the last yeah. 20 years? I mean, I'll, I'll always enjoy the originals. I think in general, I've learned not to expect much from reboots. See, yeah. what the problem is they keep going and rebooting or remaking good movies. Yeah. What you got to do is find movies that might have a good premise, but were done shittily, that, and remake those. I would agree with that. Somebody's doing that with the Dark t- the Dark Tower. Oh, they are? Are they doing a TV show? Yeah. Okay. Oh. But I mean, something like 310 to Yuma, they remade mm-hmm. that. No one gave a shit about the, the original movie before now. they did the remake. And the remake was pretty good. And I like the pretty good. Yeah. They, although then they did remade The Magnificent Seven, which, okay, the... First one is considered, uh, you know, a classic, and yeah, the second one not so much. Second one wasn't horrible; it oh. just wasn't good. I thought it's, you meant yeah, the it, third one. Well, isn't the magnificent? Seven well, okay, also, uh, yeah. a reboot. <laughs> it it it's Kurogawa. Was it Kurogawa that did the original <laughs> magnificent? Yeah, yeah Kurosawa. Samurai. The seven Samurai. Correct. Yeah. But and that wasn't didn't take place in the American West. So, but the American <laughs> West was kind of like a reboot telling of the Seven Samurai well, with the Magnificent it Seven. Is. And then they remade the of Seven again. Yeah, <laughs> um, actually, they were magnificent. I actually went back and watched <laughs> the Seven Samurai, and I, was, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Still mm-hmm. holds up. Yeah. No. Uh, I would say Paint Your Wagon. That's the one that I would probably you know be that's, okay. See, that's one they should remake. Oh. Uh, you know, Clue is coming to Cincinnati in the Aronoff. Uh, it's based on the movie. They're having a play, Broadway play. Serious? Yeah, it's uh, tickets are not available. Yeah, I checked. Is it today. a musical? Uh, I didn't say. I don't care if it. I is like or musicals. Isn't. I'm fine with musicals. But yeah, it has the same characters from the movie. Well uh, done. Oh, it's some clue. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Colonel Mustard, Mrs. <laughs> Peacock, <laughs> Mr. Green. Walk right in. Got the same characters. No Chef shit. Uh, the new White, the new Mrs. White. Is she Chef called White. Chef White or is she Mrs. White who is a chef? I'm kidding. She's a maid in the commer- in the tra- oh, in the Oh, in, no, in, in, the, in the Broadway one. No, in the new in the, the new, new movie. Yeah, the, in the new the game. She's a new chef. Game, oh, the, new game. The, yeah. the yeah. picture's she's Chef White. Yeah. Uh, the card says Chef yeah. White. I believe so. White. Uh-huh. Uh, no, it's coming in 2024. The tickets are on sale yet. So, I'll let you know. Yeah, yep. I I will be like second in line cuz yep. somebody will be there before me. Probably you. Yeah. But <laughs> Um, or, or you know what? You know, even though Lord of the Rings was rebooted mm-hmm. from the Ralph Bakshi, you know, <laughs> oh, live action oh. animation. Yeah. yeah. So I, I still like the Bakshi live action animation. It's actually pretty good still. I always loved, I always loved the fact that the orcs that they painted over, you know, the human character, human actors. Mm-hmm. I always thought that animation was really cool. Well, so. rumor is that they're rebooting Harry Potter. So I'm sure that would be great. Yeah. Why? I'm not a fan of Harry Potter. Why with... money? Yeah. You're like rebooting from the beginning or yeah. continuing like, Harry I Potter? Think from the beginning. Like redoing the... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't mo- understand why. Uh, the I... movie is 20 years old by now, Blake. <laughs> Come on, Blake. But it's I mean, still we... rel- that's still relatively young in pop culture, isn't it? Starring Daniel Radcliffe. <laughs> <laughs> As <laughs> Professor Snape. Yeah. <laughs> I... You know they're going to do something goofy in it, but like, well, you're going to have to make it different. Oh, 
But the thing is, though, if have you're you going to they, they, uh, they'll make it Henrietta Potter. Have you oh. seen the Harry Potter musical? No, I haven't. It, it was written, I think it was Darren Chris. Okay. And a few other people. And it's it's highly amusing. It's funny. Oh, was this something they did during the pandemic? It was pre-pandemic. Oh, okay. They did make a Broadway Broadway play, or in England, whatever that is over there. Um, their version West of Broadway. End. Is it? I think, it, I think they call it the West End. Okay. Um, a version. Uh, she actually wrote it, J.K. Rowling, and it's like, uh, what do you call it, in, uh, in canon. No. Yes, that's with the Harry Potter and the Cursed Child or something like that. Every child is cursed. Ooh. Well, yours definitely are. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it is. Uh, Blake, what else you got? From uh, former Canadians of the Year at hmm. Canadian of the Year... Has Scab Jeff ever been sober while on the podcast? Has Scab Jeff ever been sober past mm. 5 p.m.? Um, I was pretty... Was Jeff drinking last week? I think he was sober last week. Mm-mm. No? Mm-mm. No? Mm-mm. <laughs> he got here before uh, you guys did. Yeah. He was in the green room early? I, I can't say that. Uh, liability says I can't was, say any of this. He was taking performance enhancing uh, alcohol. <laughs> alcohol. <laughs> I mean, it's like obviously during the floppies and all, he's yes. usually pretty. Well, to be fair, he wasn't here for the floppies, but was invited and he was drunk at home. So that helped. <sighs> that helped. Um, Didn't help him win a floppy. No, no, it did not. Uh, what else got? Mm-hmm. He's uh, Jeff's on a different level. He is very yeah. meta, mm-hmm. very meta. Exactly. So, uh, listener reviews from Kevin at Cincy Explorer mm. saw The Whale last week Brandon and Frazier. still trying to analyze my thoughts on it, but I will say Brandon Fraser did give the performance of his career. I find that hard to believe The Mummy was awesome and I so was Blast to the Past. I find it hard to believe that Encino Man is <laughs> in his uh, book of... Blast from the Past? <laughs> Have you seen Encino Man? Yeah, it's awful. I mean, Brendan Fraser gave the performance of a career. Mm, blast from past. Although, in all honesty, he was really good in Gods and Monsters. Uh, Ian, is that with Ian? Ian McKellen? McKellen. Yeah. Who plays James Whale, the director of the original Frankenstein movie. Oh, okay. But uh, he's in The Whale, and he was in the movie where he was with the character The Whale. Uh, see what I did there? <laughs> anyway, should I edit that out? No. Um, <laughs> edit. Um, we have a new. Ca- we have an old segment coming back this week. Thanks to Professor Number One, and I think we even have some theme songs. Tiny surgery. I'd like to take his his face off. Face off. Face off. So so we had to play that clip just so you can go ahead and impersonate yes. it. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. No, that's sunglasses off. Oh my bad. I thought it was the face. I want to take his sunglasses off. Yeah. Trademark. Dong, dong. <laughs> <laughs> That's not <laughs> from CSI. <laughs> it is now. <laughs> yeah. That is not CSI. <laughs> Anyways, it's, it's Criminal Minds. Uh, <laughs> from Professor That's number, what you say. <laughs> from Professor number one, I talked to number one. I'm taking this one. Uh, Face off is when you have a group or one on one or three on three. In this case, uh, four Battle on four. Battle Royale. Yeah. Like. Grouple. And we pick who wins. So if you have a face-off you would like us to uh, judge, send it on in at Bad Ideas Podcast on Twitter. I, I will say, going in, I think he's throwing us a softball here. Well, let's see. It's Mickey Mouse mm. versus Bugs Bunny versus Papa Smurf versus Scooby-Doo. I think this is a softball here. Who is it? Bugs, Bugs Bunny. Bunny. Okay. All the weapons in the arsenal that guy has. Bugs yeah. Bunny's got the attitude that he's taking you down. Yeah. That's true. I mean, Mickey's going to lose. Woo-hoo. Papa Smurf yeah, is well, probably yeah. going to well, stay out of it. Yeah, the, and the, Scooby-Doo's going to run the, away scared. The, the finale is Bugs Bunny and Scooby-Doo. Oh, I don't know. Mickey uh, Mouse is the Mickey Mouse that they introduced in South Park. 
Uh, oh, the South Park <laughs> Mickey Mouse. Ooh. Ooh, take that, bitch. It's <laughs> a good one. It's true. <laughs> well, if it's that Mickey Mouse, then there's a little bit of a change. Yeah, yeah are we talking about on cinema screen Mickey Mouse or Mickey Mouse in real life? <laughs> Don't make Mickey Mouse b- slap a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm going, I'll am going. i go Bugs Bunny as well. Uh, Papa Smurf might come in second just because he has a lot of uh, soldiers at his disposal. Yeah, I don't think he's got the heart to fight like that. And they're only yeah, three pa- apples pa- high. Yeah, pa- mm. Papa Smurf just won't fight. Yeah. yeah. He'll just back out of it. Mm. Step on him. Yeah. But they're no, three apples. He probably won't even make it to the ring. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Uh, so I'll go, you would just run away scared. I'll go Bugs Bunny. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, it depends. Uh, yeah. What if you threw like a big sandwich into the ring? A Scooby snack? And and he had to fight for that big ass sandwich that Shaggy just mm. made. Ooh. It all depends. Does Bugs Bunny want to win? Then he'll let him have the sandwich, <laughs> and then throw a ghost at him. <laughs> boo! Woo! Mm-hmm. Jeff, Medea, boo! Ah, there you go. But uh, but, but I don't know. Scooby always ends up winning in the in the end. Yeah, but yeah, Shaggy and the rest of the crew with him. Oh, well, you, you just gave Papa Smurf all his soldiers. He's three apples high! Mm. You gotta give him if some he advantage. Gets the rest of Smurfs, he doesn't, Scooby doesn't get it. Fine, Mickey Mouse gets Huey, Dewey, and Louie. Oh. Scooby Doo can get Velma and Daphne and Fred. Or, or could it be. But not Shaggy. Or could it be Scooby Doo actually wins at the end and is not really Bugs Bunny? They unmask him. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Professor Hyde White. If it's yeah. not really Bugs Bunny, then Scooby Doo has an outside chance. That's like right. It. I like it. We thought you were Bugs Bunny. You're Daffy Duck. <laughs> <laughs> we thought you were Daffy Duck. Oh, <laughs> you're Elmer Fudd. He's Old Man Withers. It turns out it's Old Man Withers the entire time. <laughs> it's duck season, rabbit season. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jeff, give me some news of the geek music. News of the Geek. News of the Geek. This is the music for News of the Geek. Per Cockatoo, uh, Emilando. What was that, Jason? Uh, Emilando? No. Ernie. Per what? Cockatoo? Cockatoo. Kotaku? Whatever. Uh, Ernie Castro, a former softball. <laughs> softball. <laughs> softball engineer. Hermenildo <laughs> Castro. Ernie Castro is what it says here. A former software engineer at Zululi. Fidel's lesser-known cousin. <laughs> is accused of stealing over 300000 from online realtor, realtor, retailer, Jesus, through a scheme straight out of the 1999 movie Office Space. Jesus has nothing to do with this. He cl- now claims the money's all gone, telling police he lost most of it betting on GameStop meme stock options. How do you... <laughs> Do that. <laughs> well, you take the money and you bet on GameStop. <laughs> no, no, but GameStop, like, he waited until the GameStop <laughs> got big yes. before yes. he bought. Yes. No, he Why bought it when it was big. Why would you do that? Well, that's what he waited yeah. until it got big. <laughs> yeah. he then was, he bought. He hey, I late. bought at 300 and he we bought. He was late to the party. Yeah. He was late to the party and decided he was the last guy to buy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do you see this guy? Just, everyone else is getting out. He's buying up. That's this right. guy just put two hundred thousand on games up. Sell, sell, yeah. sell, wow. sell. Uh, yeah. So documents filed by prosecutors in Kings County Superior Court states Mr. Castro is charged with two counts of felony theft and one count of felony identity theft. He allegedly manipulated the code of Zul- on Zululi's checkout page to siphon off at least two hundred sixty-one thousand dollars in shipping fees <laughs> into his personal Stripe banking account. They were never going to notice that missing. <laughs> <laughs> he allegedly then proceeded to change the prices on products, paying pennies on the dollar for them, and having them shipped directly to his home when they piled up on his front door. <laughs> yeah, they were never going to find this either. Yeah, I, I, I don't quite understand his way of deal. He bought all this product to just. Let it pile up. Well, no, well to generate shipping fees. Uh, Ernie, this is uh, this is Ralph, your neighbor next door. Uh, you no, no, I should tell you why he bought some of this stuff. But but he still oh. had it. Oh, uh, we have, we, <laughs> I'm we not, have to get through the article. Uh, I'm not trying to say anything bad, but uh, I'll be honest. People in the neighborhood are a little worried because you got flies around all those packages on the front steps. <laughs> Uh, how much cheesecake did you order? Prosecutors claim he sold... I don't think Zulily <laughs> sells cheesecake. You don't know. They do not. Oh, damn it. Prosecutors claim he sold $40,842 this way for a total theft of 302000 When interviewed by police after his arrest, he admitted the figure could have been even higher, but said the money was all gone. 
Quote, he clarified that he had used the money to invest in stock options, particularly GameStop stock options, says the court. Yeah. According to prosecutors, he began skim off the top of Zulily's transactions in February 2022. The company became aware of the discrepancies the following month and ordered Castro's and others to investigate. That's when he allegedly updated the code to double charge customers. Which will never get noticed. Uh, they started to flag the unusual purchases. Shipping to his home. Yes. Castro told Zululi uh, and the police that the purchases were just test orders that he forgot to cancel. However, emails allegedly show Castro ordering stuff specifically for a woman he met on Tinder. <laughs> this just keeps getting worse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These choices just got exponentially worse. She would send him links to stuff she wanted, <laughs> and he would respond back with a heart emoji to show it has been purchased. When asked this by police, Castro was unable to provide an immediate answer. So he's also an incel. Yes. He's a simp. <laughs> he returned his work laptop on June 9th when he was fired, which also didn't do him any favors. Delete everything. Yeah, he didn't scrub the hard scrub drive. Scrub the hard drive. <laughs> when Zulu searched it, the company reportedly discovered a one-app file named Office Space Project. <laughs> 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 Leave no clues behind. <laughs> Prosecutor said it went through his scheme in detail, including adjustments he made to try and keep it hidden from management. Do not open management. <laughs> <laughs> management, keep out. <laughs> well, can't open that. For sensitive eyes only. <laughs> Asked by police, Castor even admitted that Office Space, a movie about workers self actualizing by stealing small amounts of money from millions of company transactions, was what the scheme. Uh, the th- and the file was named after. <laughs> after executing a search warrant on July 21st, they claimed to have located, quote, an exorbitant, exorbitant, exorbitant. A- number of Zulily orders, many still in their original packaging, so you could return them at least. Among them was a gray linen convertible sofa bed priced at $565 that Castro allegedly paid $1. One dollar. <laughs> One dollar, Bob. <laughs> 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 Castro's arraignment is scheduled for later this month. At $16 a share, GameStop's stock is currently lower than any other time since the office space plan has allegedly started to unfold. Uh, it's possible the funds are still out there somewhere. In one part of the office space project document, in the document, he'll, he rep- reportedly wrote, quote, prepay off-grid backup plan. <laughs> Prepare <laughs> off-grid backup plan. Prepare, sorry, not, not prepay, sorry. Uh, that, that, that was Prepare. plan A. Plan B was set the office building on fire? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Three, order staplers. I need salt for this uh, mojito. I asked for salt. Uh, no salt. And there's definitely salt. <laughs> I just like the 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 file was named Office Space Projects. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think those guys were looking at it in IT like this this guy can't be that dumb, right? Yes, he is. Never mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah Ernie, we're gonna need to talk to you the about bobs. the Bobs. <laughs> <laughs> One say I'm missing it. We're gonna need to talk to you about your Office Space project. <laughs> oh my god! You didn't put a cover letter on it. <laughs> yeah, can we come in Saturday? So if you're going to siphon money, don't name it Office Space. <laughs> oh, and everybody, this is from the movie Office Space, not the television show The Office. Correct, yes. correct. Uh, per CBR.com, where Jeff gets all of his news from, and we got this covered.com, where Doug gets all of his news from. Okay, here we go. Uh, do, you want, do you want Blake to read this since he is the expert? No, no, this is better if I do. Wizards of the Coast publisher, just co- stop me anytime. And, and no, I, I'll let you finish. because uh, I'm not going to do, do all this. this. All right. uh, publisher of the massively popular tabletop role-playing game Dungeons & Dragons broke its silence late last week for the first time since details of changes to its long-standing open gaming license were leaked by not only IO9, but, but also Hobie. And Gizmo. Yeah, Hobie. We talked about it last week yep. as we go. And at that point in time, Wizards of the Coast hadn't issued a... Re- public yep. statement about what the hell is going on. Hope, do- hope he puts pressure on people. Yeah. We do. Document included proposed changes including new restrictions on thirty par- third-party publishers, new copyright clause, and a staggering 25% royalty due on revenues over three-quarters of a million dollars. In a statement posted to the company's D&D Beyond website, Wizards of the Coast announced that, quote, the next OGL on open gaming license will contain the provisions that allow us to protect and cultivate this inclusive environment we are trying to build and spec- uh, specify that it covers only content for TTRPGs. Tabletop, tabletop role-playing games. Thank you. 
That means that other expressions such as educational and charitable campaigns, live streams, cosplay, VTT uses, virtual tabletops uses, uh, will remain unaffected by any OGL update. Content already released under 1.0a will also remain unaffected. So that's everything up from the beginning to 5e. Yep. So what they're looking to do is monopolize the new 1D and D that they're going to release on D and D Beyond. Okay. Company also said that OGL update would not include the proposed royalty structure of or any royalty structure at all. Nor will it include a license back provision many felt could be used to give Wizards, Wizards of the Coast propi- proprietary proprietary, proprietary. Thank proprietary. You. Yeah. rights over any content. They stated that quote this this thought never crossed our minds. Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't see this as a potential because our minds just aren't that evil. Wizards of the Coast also said the original uh, uh, b- the concept the original concept behind <clears throat> the OGL update was an attempt to quote prevent the use of D and D content from being included in hateful and discriminatory products. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck they're talking about, <laughs> but I, I do believe <laughs> after they were heavily criticized for being silent for so long that they came out with three reasons of why they did what mm-hmm. they did, and the first one was. We're going to put up a social justice shield. Yep. Yeah. That's what that was. I, the, the, I shall save my other this, you know, editorial comments. This was the company yeah. that uh, last year released a, a new book that had a big public outcry because they had a race in there that uh, was pretty much a race that... Uh, uh, they were kind of like space monkeys mm. that were slaves, and there was a big so you hit a lot of when you, this you hit out. a lot of trigger warnings with that. Yeah. So this is the company that's looking to, you know, protect the di- discrimination. Stop use of D and D content from being included in hateful and discriminatory products. And it's like, like they're the, the ones we made. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like what we put out. Hey, you know those assholes that threw that out last year? <laughs> Fuck them! Oh, yeah. that's you, sir. Damn it! Shit. Uh, so I, I, I think that was a, a failed attempt at trying to hide behind a social justice yes. shield. But the other reasons, you can keep going. They also claim that the, quote, plan was always to solicit the input of our community before any update to the OGL. That's bullshit, because uh, it's been since released that uh, Wizards of the Coast, under a non-disclosure agreement, already met with third-party developers in December, basically saying, here's our OGL 1.1, and here's a contract. Sign it now. That's where the leak came from. It's unclear exactly why Wizards of the Coast was planning on moving forward with any solicitation, as the OGL update was set to occur last Thursday, and the proposed changes only came to light through leaked documents. Yeah. Correct. And Thursday, they were supposed to release a statement, and they canceled their statement Thursday, <laughs> and then Friday, they, they came out. D and D Beyond yes. forums came out with their their. Yes. Statement. They Menace came of- out with this excrement of a statement of how not to write a public relations apology, <laughs> but their hand was forced due to the, all the cancellations on D&D Beyond, which crashed their website. But anyways, keep going. Was it John Harbaugh that was in charge of No. Video? Oh. Uh, let's the see company here. company also addressed. Many, cance- uh, many subscribers have canceled their subscriptions to D&D Beyond, and other companies are seeking out and developing their own open license game re- mechanics to use in lieu of D&D. Multiple D&D players took to social media after Wizards of the Coast finally responded to a fan outcry. No, you, you skipped you skipped a, a comment here about the company also addressed fan backlash, saying it's clear from the reaction oh, yeah. that we rolled a one. <laughs> Correction, you took a 20, and you <laughs> fucked up royally. <laughs> and if you're a gamer, you get the reference. If not, you'll have to go Google that shit. But yeah, they said the plan was always to solicit input for a company, but yeah, obviously that was bullshit. All right, yeah, keep After explaining its reasoning for the changes and agreeing to alter some specifics in the final OGL, the company wrote, quote, you're going to hear people say they won, and we lost because making your voices heard forced us to change our plans. Those people will only be half right. They won, and so did we. (laughs) And that pissed off a lot of community people. Whoever wrote that just lost any goodwill they might have had. Yeah, the the (laughs) backlash in social media and and news stories like Gizmodo and io9 and talk about it, 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 it's even made mainstream news saying, you know, uh, RPG community faces its biggest big bad evil 
uh, <laughs> at big bad evil guy battle ever. Greedy Corporation. Hasbro, obviously. How many D and D games this this weekend included Wizards of the Coast as the main bad guy? You know, it could be. I mean, a lot, but but yeah, but but hold on. It, it, Who this are also, you? I'm the wizard yeah, of but, the coast. Yes, but go ahead. Fin- finish this next paragraph, and I could I could make a thought behind what they're trying to get across that didn't come out in that statement. Fans accused the company of gaslighting, calling the tone petulant, yeah, and expressed disbelief that a PR team or lawyer approved the message. Other, others said that they could not believe the audacity of Wizards of the Coast to declare that I had won two. Most agreed that the overall tone sounded childish and proved that Wizards of the Coast did not care about players. Well, this is this is what happens because right now the IP is in the hands of evil corporate media types and not people who love the game and, mm-hmm. and nourished it and et cetera. So this is this is going to happen when Hasbro uh, announced last year that they're going to try and monetize it yes. as much as possible. And I, I can't remember I talked about this yeah. last week, but you know, good um, you know, good good podcast that I, I was watching Roll for Combat had Ryan Dancy on it, talking about it. And he was talking about how, you know, for years, Hasbro has kept Wizards of the Coast and Magic the Gathering IPs separate. Mm -hmm. And so when the stakeholders, shareholders all got together, they were always asking the wrong question because Wizards of the Coast makes up like 50% of Hasbro's monetary profits, right? Mm -hmm. So they're always like... it's astounding considering Hasbro owns the toy market. Yeah, exactly. And, and they're like, and for years they've been asking the wrong questions like, hey, what's new for the G.I. Joe release this year? When they really should have been asking, hey, what's going on with D&D? Mm-hmm. Because that's your money cow right there. But anyways, yeah. But Is so, it a bad thing though with Hasbro monetizing because they're trying, they're making, they're putting effort in to make the movies, the cartoons, they're doing toys now. Yeah, but... They don't understand the community that's buying their product. Okay. Yeah, you have to understand... Yeah, the people that have come in to manage the brand mm-hmm. don't understand. The, they're not from the community. That's the the problem. Like, for example, when Atkinson saved TSR from Lorraine Williams in bankruptcy, he was a D&D fan, right? Okay. And he turned it over to third edition people who were fans of D&D. And Ryan Dancy, who wrote the original OGL. So they knew what they were doing. And their first major misstep when they sold it to ha- when Had- Atkinson then sold it to Hasbro, Hasbro took it over, and the first thing they did was look at the third three five and go, let's do fourth edition and let's limit that one away from the OGL, right? And that's where, you know, they they they, they that's what one of the reasons why fourth edition never took off. Gotcha. You know, but anyways, I I talked about it last week, but go ahead. And finally, Wizards Coast has already angered fans with previous responses. Uh, tweeted yeah. out from that D and D Beyond account, telling fans who would have answers soon. The hashtag uh, Open D and D became massively popular over the week, leading to an open yeah. letter for <laughs> Wizards of the Coast demanding the developer developer cancel its plan for, and update the OGL. Well, I mean, this is you know the year after they completely fucked up uh, Magic the Gathering. Yes. So, like the same people, they thought, well, now that we're done. F- Fucking up Magic the Gathering. Let's fuck up Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. This is when, when you don't have good curators of your product. Exactly. This is when you would put me in charge, and this, I have no idea yeah. what to do. Yeah. What the, the, no, like, no. You're, you're, I would say you probably would do a better job, Jason, because oh. you're not a greedy bastard. Well, that's true. That's uh, true. I don't know. It, it, let's say like we had it, and then we decided, let's put Brian and Jason in charge of D&D with our group. <laughs> you one, could finish the final, game. One final game. Yeah, one final You encounter. could finish the games. That's right. You could actually All win the games. put out an end. Yeah. <laughs> hey, right. uh, hey, Jim. And charge $100,000 yeah. for it. Hey, hey Jim, yeah. I got this uh, Dungeons & Dragons uh, idea. What happens if we end it? Yeah. <laughs> we'll just finish it. Yeah. So what is interesting is the backlash of the cancellation. So this is something Watsi's had. You know, in the bank going forward, it wasn't some. Oh, that was a draft. We didn't mean that. No, that was original OGL 1.1. But you know what they originally wanted to do was do this, and they faced so much fan backlash and cancellations of D and D Beyond because they bought D and D Beyond with the with the auspice, you know, with the plan of we're going to also corner the virtual tabletop market, right? So we're going to get into that here in a second because news broke a couple hours ago on The Gamer Go tell us. what they're doing D&D Beyond. So, like, for people like me, right, so if they were going to make that retro and, and also corner the market on VTT, so, for example, I'm a fan of Foundry VTT, right? I pay a one-time subscription, which is $50. 
Now, if you wanted a fifth edition or you wanted Pathfinder 1E, Pathfinder 2E, or you wanted 13th Age, there's all those special uh, branches out there with Foundry that are run and monitored by people that run the site for a 3.5, right? So, right. an example, the guy that runs the 3.5 was, was in trouble because he produces um, content for 5E and 3.5E, and he's also the monitor for 3.5E and Foundry VTT. So, I pay him in Kickstarter, you know, a small mm-hmm. monthly fee because I'm like, you know what, this guy's doing the coding, he's updating the games. Mm-hmm. You know, if that OGL was revoked retro, this guy who's using this as a uh, source of income, et cetera, couldn't use Foundry. You know, you mm. couldn't play 3.5 anymore on a VTT because they would have nixed all that because they wanted to monopolize with what they're coming out with D&D Beyond. And so now they've also have come out with D&D Beyond. Right now you play like a three-tier thing. And so what they're looking to do, with they've announced in D&D Beyond, is they want everybody... To pay the same amount, oh, God. thirty dollars a month subscription to D and D Beyond. So if you do that for twelve months, you're paying three hundred and sixty dollars mm. a year, and which is a four hundred percent increase in that's, your subscription. That's fucking. Re- so you're saying I'm going to be canceling my D and D Beyond subscription? That is a possibility. So yeah. So and this is where Watsy's like, oh shit, people are canceling D and D Beyond. Because they had this plan, and we're going to up everybody's monthly fees, which, you know, if they were able to corn it to 1.1 with the one new 1D&D, which they would say would make retro to 5E, but they're coming up basically at 6th edition, yeah. right? So this is where, like, people were, you know, like uh, my guy who runs the Foundry 3.5 was like, I'm fucked. You know, if they come out with this OGL, it's true. I can't do this anymore because I can't give... You know, you know, publication rise in public, and it's because D and D, as I said, when they wanted to break into VTT, because they're like, look at all these VTTs out there that people are using to play online for D and D. Let's buy D and D Beyond, and they did. And their ultimate goal was to try and get everybody thirty dollars a month to play on D and D Beyond. Now, that's according to the gamer that just broke the story um, a couple hours before we started podcasting. I was just reading it as I was doing my in-depth research while eating Jim's chicken wings that I ordered for him. How was so, that beer? It was great. Okay, thank you. you know, but so anyway, so this is all coming together and starting to unravel because why would you pay $30 a month for the new one D and D and D beyond when you can go out to these other third party D VTTs, which are much more affordable and basically, you know, coded through volunteers that, you know, collect money through Kickstarter, which, you know, you know, if I'm paying $5 a month to because I feel like, hey, dude, you're putting your time and effort into this yeah. so I can play my game, oh, certainly. I'll pay you a little bit a month. Sure, no problem. So it's, but and he's collecting, you know, from, you know, hundreds of people, you know, through that Kickstarter. But Kickstarter would have had to pay 20% royalties, you know, through that to one d because they, of course they come back and say, all right, we're not going to make it retro. So that makes it you know affordable for them, but I think it was because they wanted to monopolize the VTT market because of D and D Beyond. Now, what's interesting is you don't hear anybody from D and D Beyond coming out with any official statements because they think when they bought D and D Beyond and, and assumed them, nobody said anything because they may have had a, a non competitive or, or, oh, sure or a science do. agreement, yeah. an NDA. Yeah, an NDA. But the guy who created D and D Beyond is quoted as saying. You know, the, the atmosphere just went completely south when they bought it. Wizards of the Coast basically told them the only reason uh, you're successful is because it's got the D&D name on it. And he left. He's like, fuck this. I'm out. And it was, a you know, so, and they probably knew this was coming, and, and but that's allegedly. I mean, it's yeah. not verified yeah. as actual. He's going on the record and said that that's somebody who said he told me that yeah. this is what had happened. And. So the well, original, well, you know, D&D Beyond people left because they're like, fuck this, we're out. They don't know what they're doing. Yeah, there was a, a leak, I don't know if we talked about that last week, where someone yeah. from D&D Beyond, mm-hmm. someone who still works there, sent out uh, the, uh, a letter. The, the letter pretty much saying, cancel your D&D Beyond subscriptions because that is the only thing they care about. Yes. Like, you can complain all you want, but until you start showing them it's hitting their bottom dollar and the subscriptions for... D&D Beyond is the only thing they're looking at. And that hits it on the nose because they just broke, hey, they were going to do $30 a month, try to get everybody to $30 a month subscriptions. Because right now you can be a DM and pay a fee, and you can share your rule books and uh, write yeah. accessories yes. with everybody. Yes. 
and you could pay a lesser fee, and the DM you know pays the big fee. You, know, yeah, you can pay zero. I, I yeah. still it's have a three tier. Yeah, it's a three yeah, tier I can pay zero, fee, right? But since yeah. Jeff pays, I can go on this and I can look up all the stuff. Yes. Yeah. Correct. But I think uh, the, the the goal was, according to Gamer, everybody pay thirty dollars a month. Yeah. Access to all that. Yeah, though that's terrible. And yep. Uh, Wizards of the Coast Maybe has not twenty dollars a year. <laughs> Hey, man. At the most. Yeah, it is true. 10 bucks a month. Oh, that's uh, even... I mean, right now, it was 80 bucks a year. Okay. I said that yeah. would be the most. even that much? I can't remember what I paid. I think it was like 60 bucks. Yeah, that sounds closer to... 60 bucks, I think, yeah. is what I like paid mm-hmm. last year. Yeah, they're going from they're going from like $5. They're six times what they're going to... Up yeah, yeah so, I, think, I think it might have been like six ninety nine a month mm-hmm. or something. So yeah. they released this uh, new OGL uh, the tweet about it. Wizards of the Coast? Yeah, uh, yeah, D&D, yeah. yeah. Wizards. Uh, please read our update on the open gaming license. We've witnessed an incredible... This is their qu- tweet. We have incre- uh, Over the past week, we have witnessed an incredible outpour of passion and dedication from our community working together to protect and cultivate the inclusive environment of D&D. Please read our update on the OGL. It got seen 3.9 million times. 5,900 people responded, and I don't even know what they're going to say. Like. Yeah. But if, but if you go to like uh, some of the Gen Con websites, people are like, well, what's this going to do for... I mean, the, it's basically everybody's got a bad taste in their mouth. But here's the other thing. Yeah, fifty four ninety nine is what the current price for a yearly subscription is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. At the highest tier. Yeah, That's so... It's kind of worth it. So it is kind yeah. of... It is kind of interesting. So the third-party non-disclosure people that were obviously involved in this initial offer from Wizards of the Coast obviously knew it was coming, couldn't disclose it because of the NDA. Mm-hmm. And so they're already say, well, you know what? We're working on a new open uh, role-playing, is it called it, ORC, O-R-C, yeah. and a number of the major third-party you know, uh, producers are signing on and doing it. Yeah. So they've got this in line already, and... And, you know, it really doesn't matter to me because Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro, you know, fucked me at fourth edition. And I, at that point, I was like, I, I almost went to Pathfinder. I've talked about it before. Yeah. You know, because it was basically basically 3.75. But uh, the, what they said interesting was Pathfinder second edition that they're coming out with isn't actually attached to an OGL. The OGL that they did with the original first edition so it wouldn't have been affected anyways. No, so Pathfinder, edition, Pathfinder, I don't yeah. think has any. So Pathfinder in their second edition coming out, yeah. it's in yeah. their best interest to come up with this open resource gaming new content, yeah, and help boost their you know product even more. And so I I don't know. There's you know there's there's bad publicity and there, you know good publicity. So I mean obviously it tells me that third party people that were in this NDAs were like they got together after they told told them no obviously. Yeah. And they said, you know, we got to come up with our own shit. And so we'll see what happens. Will, will they eventually change everything? Will they ruin it? Yeah. I don't know. They ruined it for me when I went to fourth edition. So and when, I was only concerned about the OGL because I want my 3.5 playable on Foundry. And if they went back and made it retro, you know, all your old school AD&D folks, yeah. all your Beckney well, basic expert, you know, third edition, fourth, you know, fourth, you know, fifth, you know, all that kind of stuff. Would it, They just would have... Screwed a lot of people. But also, I mean, the the thing is, most of the stuff that was like in your open game license mm. doesn't have to be in an open game license because it's out there anyway. It's it's just game. It's just it's, the way. You know, like you can't copyright rules yeah. of a game. Yeah, or I, mechanics of a game. Yeah, but if you're you under, copyright the the verbiage or the words yeah. or <clears throat> or trademark stuff, but I mean. I, I you can't tell me I can't play a game or publish a game where I have six stats and everything's based off of those stats. Yeah, but but if you're using anything as D twenty, right? The, that's what the OGL is is basically the yeah. D twenty license. But I know, mean, but I'm so. rolling dice. You can't say I can't roll a twenty sided dice Correct. to decide fate. You're right. They they can't stop you from publishing something that does that. Correct. That's like so. I mean, the open game license. I, I think uh, I shared well, a well. It's it's using those specific. Game mechanics, it with the setup. I understand what you're saying, but oh, yeah, I'm saying it's easy to get around it. To be honest, yeah, you just write something like you know when you write a report, 
and you don't copy word for word from the encyclopedia. <laughs> you phrase it your own way. Just do the same thing. Could you explain what's legal? Could you explain what an encyclopedia nope. is to No, people? I cannot. <laughs> It's look at go look it up. Encyclopedia. All right, Ted, put a dollar in the douche jar. Okay, so moving on. Yeah, so we'll, we'll see how this all eventually. Plays I guarantee out. that It'd there's going to be another cop topic next week about this. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, real quick, uh, box office news: uh, Plane made ten million dollars. The movie Plane, Jeff, it made ten million dollars. It's opening weekend of a twenty million dollar budget. Okay, moving on. Top five favorites. <laughs> So Jason wants to jump far ahead. Well, man, far ahead to top five. A Man Called Otto was fourth at 12.7. Puss in Boots was third with 13.4 this week. I Megan saw that was this weekend. second at 18 million. Puss and Avatar weighed 31 million. Puss in Boots was fun. Upcoming this week is Missing. We don't know anything about it's it. It's a sequel to Searching, <laughs> and I'm not kidding. We, we, tried, we tried finding the... Uh... Uh, I, I thought it was a remake <laughs> of the previous movie called Missing. <laughs> no. No. I thought we, I thought we couldn't find we the synopsis of the missing? movie... What? Missing online because it's not there. Ah! What did you say, Jeff? Wasn't there? Didn't we watch a movie called Missing when I was? Oh God, we did. Was it like Aaron Eckhart and yes. uh, <laughs> Kate Blanchett? I think. I don't know, but it, now I remember. I think it was like some bad western. That was a western one. Yeah. It was Kate Blanchett, and no, like it was not missing. They no. were searching. Oh, okay. This is from the minds behind searching comes missing. A thrilling <laughs> roller coaster mystery that makes you wonder how you will know the closest to you when her mother disappears while on vacation in Columbia with her new boyfriend. June's search for answers is hindered by international red tape. New boyfriend, Columbia. <laughs> what could go wrong? Stuck red tape. Thousands of miles away in Los Angeles, June creatively uses all the latest technology at her fingertips to try and find her before it's too late. But as she digs deeper, her digital sleuthing raises more questions than answers. And when June unravels secrets about her mom, she discovers that she never really knew her at all. Oh, no! I never really knew you at all. Okay, moving on. Top five this week is top five fa favorite works of fantasy. Oh, Jesus Christ. This is so easy. I just wrote down the first five. I got there. TV, <laughs> films, books, games, etc. sex dolls, whatever. Uh, so. Oh, sex dolls. Shit, I got to change this. Okay. Jeff, number five, what's yours? At number five, I have the movie Clash of the Titans. Oh. Yeah, I like that movie. Uh, the original, not the, the original, reboot. No, not the reboot. <laughs> I specifically did not mention Clash of the Titans when we were talking earlier about reboots. Oh, uh, so we could have because it was on my yeah, list. That's right. Here. So, that's cool. uh, yeah, I loved that movie as a kid, and that's probably what got me first yeah, started on my true. love of like Greek mythology and getting into all things in that direction. I could have hobied that with Jason and the Argonauts. Mm -hmm. mm. And maybe it's the Sinbad movies too. So Not all the, all the Ray the Harry Harry Housen Sinbad. movies. <laughs> yeah, Ray Housen Sinbad. Uh, my number five was Saga, uh, the comic book series that uh, happened uh, ten, 10 years ago. They started. Uh, I've never read it, but I have the whole uh, omnib omnibus, and it looks amazing. So I'm going to put that as my number I five. I never read it, but it looks amazing. It's on my dad. Uh, uh, I'm finishing up Blackest Night omnibus right now, and then that's my next thing is Saga. <laughs> <laughs> number five, Jim. My number five, I hobied this. Uh huh. Oh, yeah. My number five is everything from Lord of the Rings and everything from Game of Thrones. That's my number five. Oh, <laughs> you took my number four. You took <laughs> all my <laughs> entries. I have those as honorable mentions. <laughs> Let me change a couple uh, things around. I'm like number five. I'm still gonna, I'm, I'm just gonna stick my five through one because, yeah, Jim knows. Well, it would have been on my list anyways. <laughs> uh, Blake, number five. Oh, wait, I take that back, Jim. I don't have everything from uh, Lord of the Rings. I have the director's cut <laughs> extended <laughs> edition movies of Lord, Lord of the, the Rings. Rings. Get Correct. out. Not The Hobbit. Yeah. Not the regular <laughs> movies. Not, how, not The uh, Rings of Power. Yeah, not Rings of Power. Yeah. So. I agree. That's or even a, The books. Or the last two seasons of the Game of Thrones on the television series. Oh, yeah. Less, uh, I don't have the last honestly, few books of Game of Thrones on here because <laughs> they're not out yet. Because they're not out yet. Honestly, I'll say the last four seasons, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> That's when they started to go downhill. That's where they started is coming up with their own content because some of the storylines were more advanced than the others. Yes. So, Blake, number five is your Wheel of Time, right? No. Oh. Number five is a Black Company series written yeah. by Glenn Cook. That's pretty awesome. It, it to an extent. Uh oh. I agree. I would say probably he he wrote a couple iterations of trilogies. Yeah. 
But the further he kept it going, as the further as the company got south back to their origins, I mean, other than the main conflict, you know, with the lady and uh, the Dominator, once they get away from all that shit and they start going south, it just gets really fucking weird. And I just lost interest. Well, he, he, came, he, came, he, had to, he, had to, he had to make it a little different than what he had just written before, I think, is what, what happened. And... Well, he, he also wrote these books on his brakes on the industry automobile yeah. assembly line. <laughs> <laughs> and he also he probably knew he was going to have to retire soon. He's like, I don't want to. What am I going to do? I'll just go off on this weird tangent of the origin of the black company and. I'll cash in and then I'll just quit. Uh, the Black Company was a good series, though. I, I liked it. The characters in it, and uh, you know some of the wizards, and uh, you know I actually take some of those characters and use them as uh, uh, similarities to my good old uh, OGL 1.0 uh, <laughs> three five games. Can we go to run into one eye on our next? Yeah, it could, it could happen. <laughs> it's true. Uh, go ahead, Blake. Number four uh, for uh, Fritz Leber. I've always been a fan of Fofford and the Gray Mauser, too. You know, the, the problem is uh, it's not an easy read for people because he wrote them as short stories and, you know, in Pulp Fiction and, and uh, you know, books, you know, uh, uh, what do they call those? Uh, pulp, not Pulp Fiction books, but those other things. So a lot of the stuff were just like, I'm just going to write a short story with uh, Fofford and the Gray Mauser, and uh, here's the episode for uh, this, and, you know, basically writes it real quick for whatever publication that they wanted and set it out. So there's no real arcing storyline between Fofford and the Grey Mauser. It's just a hodgepodge of short stories. Like an anthology of stories. Yeah, it's kind of like an anthology of stories. It would have been great if... I mean, there are there is some continuity a little bit between stories, but it would have been great if there was like a beginning concept to end, you know. But I always I always thought the Fofford and the Grey Mauser were a pretty good series. Uh, number four, Jim? Number four, I hope you this... <laughs> Now, this is just a couple books. Uh, it's Neil Gaiman's American Gods <laughs> and uh, Raymond Feast's uh, Fairy Tale. They're both. Uh, I thought you said Neil Diamonds. Neil Gaiman. <laughs> Gaiman's, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hey, we're coming to a fairy tale near you <laughs> today. <laughs> They're both written more from present day uh, okay. uh, per, uh, per point of view. So, uh, Blake, I'm going to do what you do. Give me a number between one and four. <laughs> Two. Bunny Kingdom. Ooh. Actually, I wanted that to be number one. Uh, <laughs> Bunny Kingdom, the, t- uh, the board, board game. game, tabletop game. Really enjoy that. You make little fiefs, fiefs and uh, kind of build your village. It's a fun game. It I is. Like mm-hmm. it. Really love it. Uh, Jeff, number four. Uh, let's see. Number four. I have uh, the Elder Scrolls series of video games. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Started I do. Started with Arena. I still, well, oh, I've never shit. played Elder Scrolls Online because I hate playing online. I agree. So I guess uh, Skyfall is still the most recent. Yeah. Well, the uh, Silver Anna did an oh, anniversary. Skyfall. Or is it the Golden? Are they on the Golden Skyfall. Anniversary <laughs> edition? I can't remember. Elder Scrolls Skyfall. <laughs> yeah. Bam. Uh, what's no, I forgot what it was you know, called. Sky, Skyrim. 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 I'm like, I got yeah. Skyrim. 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 <laughs> Skyrim. Skyler. Skyfall. Oh. <laughs> Skyrim. Yeah. I love when Adele. Hey, I took an arrow to yeah. the knee. That's right. I you love know, when Adele does the theme song to yeah. that. When you load up it the game. Is, it's yeah, the best go. part. Oh, it's so amazing. I you just know, replay the beginning yeah. over and over again Skyfall. to hear it. Skyfall. You know, TSR had a great uh, um Role-playing game based on that. Top Secret, kind of James Bond RPG. Oh, yeah, we played but, it. But it wasn't James Bond. No, But it was no, Top it was Secret. It was International Spy. Yeah. I played it until yeah. during the uh, denouement of the story, I got my head blown off. <laughs> Not too happy about that. No. So thanks for bringing it That should have been the no. finale. Well, <laughs> it was Not over. We had everybody arrested. We oh. just... He hadn't checked the attic yet. <laughs> so I checked the attic, and he got a lucky shot and blew my head off <laughs> as I climbed into the attic. <laughs> uh, number three for you, Jeff. <laughs> oh, it's still me. That uh, was not an arrow see. to the knee. Number three, I have... Uh, the, the wizard is hungry. The uh, the, the comic uh, Knights of the Dinner Table. <laughs> it's yeah. about people sitting around playing role-playing games. Okay. Hackmaster specifically. Hackney! Yeah. No, Hackmaster. Oh, Hackmaster. I think it's Hackmaster. No. Uh, Blake, give me a number. One through uh, four. Not number two, though. Three. Raya and the Last Dragon, the Disney film. I really enjoy that film. 
I'm just trying to come up with the fancy works, people. Leave me alone. Uh, I really enjoy that film, though. If you like it, you like it. I do. Uh, number three for you, Jim. No, I hobied this one. Really? <laughs> I am going to go with the. I'm going to go with another Raymond Feast uh, mm-hmm. series, the Magician series, uh, Crondor, and everything that came from that series. And I'll go with. Is that uh, what the TV show, The Magicians, is based off of? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> no. And uh, uh, the Terry Brooks uh, sort of Shannara series. Just the books, not the television show, <laughs> which was hot garbage. Coming to Fox in yeah. the fall. I, n- I never read. I never read the books, but I was like, oh, sort of Shannara. I'll just watch the MTV <laughs> production. Yeah, that was a mistake. Yes, because that actually took over like kind of like the third or fourth. Yeah. Uh, book didn't even have the original, but and then there's yeah. probably I would like ten or eleven uh, three story arcs that they go through. So yeah. There's a ton of stories out there for it. But it was a nice little reveal, you know. It wasn't a fantasy adventure land. It was in the future. Oh yeah. Post nuclear apocalypse yeah. and elves were a mutation and orcs were radioactive peeps. Yeah. What, what's your number three, Blake? Oh, my number three. Uh, I got. Yeah, Game of Thrones, minus the last two seasons. Okay. And also, I like, the House of Dragons. Uh, House of Dragons is good. Yeah. Didn't that just win a gold globe? Sure. Yeah. Yes. yes, it did. What's your number two? Uh, number two is, like, um, you know, of course, just D&D. Ooh. You know, from the basic, from the beginnings, of the, the, the Beck Me, the basic mm-hmm. expert, companion, D&D. masters. Dynamite. Yeah, immortal. It's old AD&D, second edition AD&D, 3.5. And then fuck you, fourth edition, and you know. I really you know, like fourth edition. It makes five, the game go quicker. Yeah, five E simplified no, things. No, it does yeah. not. It's all right. Maybe we're playing yeah. fifth edition. I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. We should, you should probably listen to the D and D song by Stephen Lynch. Yeah. I probably should. Yeah. I know. <laughs> and and I also like anything you know from uh, Ed Greenwood. You know the quote unquote Elminster of the Forgotten Martin Realms. Character? I love the Forgotten Realms. Yeah, oh. and, you know good stories in there too. I yeah. forgot about them. Ed Grimley. Yeah, big FR fan. <laughs> Love Ed Grimley. Uh, what's your number two, Jim? I'm two. I'll go with more D and D content. I'll go with uh, the R. A. Salvatore Drizzt. Uh, yeah. I include that in the Forgotten Realms. Yes, it is the yes. Forgotten Realms. Mm-hmm. But most of that again, there's thirty some books. Yeah. <laughs> thirty some books series. on Drizzt alone. Yep. Yeah, he he. Did a lot of drizzt. He's cashing in on that. Oh, yeah. At did. least he can finish a series. <laughs> what do you mean? Whatever do you mean? Oh, wait a minute. He's still writing drizzt. <laughs> he still is. I'm just going to say I'm going to start a nine novel book series. The, the best thing is... Just make two is, and then just wait wait it out. In this yeah. series, all the characters, all his uh, companions... Mm-hmm. Again, he is an elf, a, a dark elf, where he yeah. lives for thousands of years. Yes. All his companions have died like three or four times and been <laughs> brought back. <laughs> well, you know, when you reach that writer's block, you go, ah, fuck it. I'll bring him back. Uh, resurrection time. <laughs> uh, I, need Brunner, I need Brunner back. So, uh, need yeah, Brunner, yeah, he was reborn <laughs> as a other dwarf and uh, sir, was now he? just realized what his heritage was. <laughs> you know, I am pretty b- lonely. Let's bring back Caddy Bray. <laughs> Uh, Blake, give me a number one or four. One. Lost Woods, the tabletop game. Jeff got me that. <laughs> <laughs> that's as close as I get to D&D. Yeah, that's uh, very... Yeah, I guess there are fantical... Fant- fantical? fantical? Yeah. Fantical... Faniacal... <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> fantasy aspects to it. There are creatures in there that are yeah. fantasy creatures. And- uh, number one... Or number two for you, Jeff? Uh, number two for me is the uh, Piers Anthony series, The Incarnations of Immortality. Ooh. It... Uh, Takes you know uh, the the concepts of like death, time, nature, fate, and war, and gives the uh, gives them a, like a, a creature or an incarnation, you know, and and it's an interconnected series of like seven books. And Do they finish it? It's finished. Yes. Okay. Well, they finished it and then thought, oh, we'll put in good and evil as also incarnation. So I'll write two more books. <laughs> uh, number one. Oh, yeah, we're at number one for me. Number one for me is uh, Critical Role, specifically Campaign yep. 2, The Mighty Nine. It's an honorable mention for me. Yeah, you, you don't know anything about it. <laughs> they, they, they they killed off Molly. Jim just got to that part last week. They killed off one of the characters. By last week, I'm now probably about 
<laughs> 40 hours ahead of that now. <laughs> There's always Ray's dead. But uh, they were too low level. Got to go find a cleric. They had a cleric. She was too low level. I mean, no, go find an NPC cleric. Well, they didn't have enough gold. Or, uh, yeah, they were too low level. Oh, yeah. That's a good segue. And, and they buried the body, and when they went back to it, it was gone. There you go. That's a very good segue. Mine was only mostly dead, my number one here. The Princess Bride. Yeah. Two oh, that's right. It's your wife who doesn't like it. My that. wife hates right. it. Yeah. Uh, number one for you, Jim. I hope he this. What, really? Yes. It's a couple book series. Mm-hmm. Uh, two of them by Brandon Sanderson. It's the Way of Kings and Oathbringer series and his Mistborn series. And then Stephen King's Dark Tower series. Ah. The movie, right? <laughs> oh, you got daggers thrown Blake, what's your number one? What's yeah. your number one over there? Well, I'm, I'm going to hobby it okay. because I, I, cause it reminded me of games. But I did, number one, of course, I had was Tolkien. Okay. You know, I not a big fan of the Rings of Power. I thought it was okay. I had a lot of problems with it, and it's not because of whatever. I have a lot of problems. Stupid, with you. stupid <laughs> shit. And I, you know, now my one daughter, or one daughter's a big. They're, they're, well, they're both big Tolkien fans because I got them on the, you know, extended directors, you know, on the extended cuts of the uh, original trilogy, and they love them, right? And so the one went in to watch Rings of Power. She's like, oh, yeah, I like it. It was good and stuff. She's like, why wouldn't you like it? I said, well, I don't like it because a lot of the stuff that they did and whatever isn't actual Tolkien. It's, it's an adapt, you know, adaptation of Tolkien. And people who can't get beyond that because they can't enjoy it because they don't have the rights to it. They they don't have the rights which to is weird else. that you would pay that much for, for non not having rights, rights of the good stuff. So they made stuff up and they've taken a lot of liberties. That's where I have problems with the Tolkien. I, honestly, I... I thought the uh, the elf uh, was it Orient Orinder um, I forget his name. I thought he had the Orangelo. best Orangelo. No, um, I can't remember. Orangelo? Orogenous. <laughs> no. Orogenous. Or- it's Orogenous. No. I thought he had the best storyline out of that entire series. Glorfindel. I, yeah, no, not Glorfindel. The, uh, the out. but anyways, it, and it, well, let me move. Uh, oh, which Glorfindel? Oh, oh, jeez. They screwed up on that one. <laughs> don't know what's because elves don't reuse names. Oh, man. And Tolkien himself reused the name. <laughs> yeah. I, oh. Oh, God forbid. No, but but anyways, that, that's see that, that's where uh, George R. R. Martin was smart. Everybody has everybody's the same got name. names yes. over and over again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. How many uh, freaking uh, Walders are there? Oh God, in how many Grays? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, exactly. But my other one would be because you you brought up you know Skyfall. <laughs> So I immediately thought, I was like, oh, yeah, video games. I love Baldur's Gate and Baldur's Gate 2. Actually, the Baldur's w- Gate, the original, a lot more. The Wizard is Hungry. Not that I heard one. they were coming That's, out with new... Uh, they, Baldur's, Baldur's Gate, Gate 3, uh, which has been in development for, for several years now, is not on the chopping block. Because one of the things that Wizards of the Coast did before they announced that 1.1... Oh, seriously? They, they cut a lot of their video game developments. Yeah. Now... Baldur's Gate Three is one of those that is still in development, and you know. All I, mean, that I kind thought of it was stuff, supposed to like so. come out this spring. So, yeah, uh, yeah, my Pirates game was supposed to come out too, like six times too. But, but you got out. it. No, 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 no. no the video game, game I'm talking about. Oh, oh no, yeah. Oh, That's a problem with the video games. And oh, I had some honorable mentions. Uh, go ahead, real yep, quick. I, I, I had uh, uh, Patrick Rothfuss uh, in the Name of the Winds books. But I, uh, yeah. I couldn't put it there because he wrote two of a trilogy of a trilogy, and he he's gotten George R. R. Martin syndrome. Gotcha. Uh, I, I had that as an honorable mention too. Pretty much the same reason. I like, had. I want the third book. I had the the movie again. The movie Kingdom of Heaven, the director's cut. Okay. I actually like that movie. You're right. Yeah. But again, it was it was a lot historically based. But again, they're historic they, fiction. Historic yeah. fiction. And then the movie Titan A.E. You put that on anytime you can, can't you? Of course I can. <laughs> it's a great movie. <laughs> they named the planet Bob. Bob. <laughs> I also had the Final Fantasy video game series. Oh, okay. I never uh, that, got into the I Final that Fantasy. Been on your list. Yeah. It, it, I decided to only go with one video game, and okay. Elder Scrolls beat it out Final mm. Fantasy. But Final Fantasy 1, Final Fantasy 7, Final Fantasy 10, 10, 2, and... 13, I think those ones are the ones I played. I haven't played them all. Three is fun. They're up to 16, and I don't know if that is 
includes 10 2 as uh, if there's 17 installments. Mm. So basically, Final Fantasy Tactics. So it's it's, it's false advertising because that no, is not no final. the final no. fantasy. Sue it. Now, granted, that joke came out in like 1990 when Final <laughs> Fantasy 2 came out. <laughs> uh, anything else? And I have Star Wars. I hey. thought that was a space opera. I had it's space fantasy. My only honorable. Mention. I mean, there's no science in it, yeah. so it's <laughs> got to be a fantasy. I mean, there's <laughs> wizards. And... Moving on, we, uh, <laughs> we had, we had uh, many people. magic swords. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, we, Thor. I'm a Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> we had several from fans. Sean Coon, that Pittsburgh nerd. All right, Mary let's hear the Sean. Poppins. Flesh and Blood. Uh, oh, the Beastmaster. Is Flesh and Blood a movie? I don't know. Sure it just says Flesh and Blood. Oh no. The Sword and the Sorcerer, The Lord of the Rings trilogy, and Conan the Barbarian. I'm guessing it's a movie because everything else on his list is movies. So. Yeah, it's movies. Yeah. Canadian of the Year, Brian. Ow. All right, Brian, let's give a good one. Age of Discovery trilogy by Michael Stackpole. Uh, Video okay. game? I don't know. Uh, Lord of the Rings? I don't know. Yeah. Highlander? Oh, oh yeah. Only the first one. We forgot Highlander. Tales yeah. of the Unknown, a.k.a. Bard's Tale. Yeah, oh. Oh, only the first tale. Highlander exists. Well, yeah. <laughs> you don't think of Highlander because that's really kind of a modern day thing. Flesh yeah. and Blood is a, is a uh, trade card game. Oh. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. And Dragon. Based off of the movie that he likes? <laughs> and Dragon Crown War Saga by Michael Stackpole. I think, he, I think Stackpole's a he writer. Stackpole. I've heard of the Dragon Crown Saga. I haven't read it. Uh, Steve had everything I learned from movies. Everything. Everything I learned from movies. Uh, uh, never Nicholas, ending story. Oh, it's Nicholas Cage. <laughs> story. Lord of the Rings. Uh, King Arthur, colon, Legend of the Sword. Oh, God. Oh, Game of Thrones. I've only seen the first four seasons. Good. Good. Stop. <laughs> Conan the Barbarian. Uh, yeah. Stork. He hey, had, I should add, I could add Conan the Barbarian to my list. I forgot. Stork had The Hobbit. Mm-hmm. Gloomhaven, you just bought that game. Yes. Elder, Elden Ring? Elden or Elder? Elder Ring. Elder Ring. Okay. The yeah. Witcher? The Witcher. You and know, it, I, I am intrigued. I would like to read the Witcher series. Maybe well, I should start sometimes. Well, Blake, you made his top one. Yeah. Blake's insistence that Michael Stipe actually hit on him. <laughs> <laughs> That's nonfiction. <laughs> Honorable mention, any and all religious text. Aww. <laughs> Doctor number one had my top five fancy movies are Phil Bill, The Booby Guard, Everyone I Did Last Summer, <laughs> <laughs> Throbbing Hood, <laughs> and Sorest Rump. It's a bad <laughs> list. How can you not have Madam's Family on your list? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Swiss Rump is a pretty good one. Well, okay, that's good. <laughs> I do like that one. I mean, Shaving so. Ryan's Privates. <laughs> I like Phil Bill. <laughs> Phil Bill Volume 2. <laughs> <laughs> Phil Harder. <laughs> Die Hard. There you go. Oh. Die Harder. Uh, bad Idea of the Week. Uh, ski, uh, siphoning money from your company and calling it the Office Space Project. Don't do that. Uh, that's number five. <laughs> yeah, ten, five, ten. No, no, that's no. That's too high. Uh, you think that's too high? Yeah. That's a pretty bad idea. I think it's... I think, I think we're ahead of five. Let's do seven. Seven. All right. Seven. Seven. Gotta seven. be right. top ten. Yeah, seven. I would say seven. Uh, titles for the show. I had Phil Bill. <laughs> I had Phil Bill Volume 2. <laughs> uh, I had Less Than Tom. I had Less Than Tom. Panda Farm. I had Panda Farm. <laughs> Panda Farm. <laughs> I can't wait to see that. Uh, again, that is on ABC. Uh, TGIF starts it off. Uh, you might get a hair. You might get hair and spit. Uh, I expected hot garbage. Should be on the poster. And... I just have hot garbage. Oh, okay. That's all I had. Uh, I, had, I don't know what the fuck they are talking about. <laughs> it was pretty much the whole show for me. I had Don't Be Assholes, uh, Put a Dollar in the Douche Jar, and Koalas Dying from Chlamydia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jeff? yeah. I had uh, some of them that you mentioned earlier. I had uh, Every Child is a Curse. <laughs> <laughs> I have Orangelo. And good, stop. <laughs> I really like Panda Farm. <laughs> kind of like Panda Farm and Koalas Dying of Chlamydia. 
Keep it. We'll keep it simple. We're doing panda farm because he doesn't know how to spell chlamydia. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. C H L Y Z K V A X. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> I thought it was C H. A R C U T E R I E. Oh, the R's are silent. <laughs> I, I, I figured you would know how to spell it after looking at your doctor bills, like back to me. <laughs> you, you <would> think? <laughs> no, the doctors. He went to the simple doctors. They just wrote crabs. <laughs> <laughs> the clap. <laughs> Roger says goodbye. Goodbye. Walking dead to talking heads from comic books to TV sets. Not so bad, there's the history. It's the history of bad, so bad. The history of bad, it's bad. The history of bad ideas. Oh, yes. You are listening to a hobie.